So keep that in mind. Yeah, hey, forget I asked. <laughs> That'll definitely It'll, do. Ew. Join the f Discord. It was the least fun I've ever had playing this game. A small but vibrant and extremely humble community. No, I've seen the sleeves, but I'm like, you said you're suiting up and then you put your sleeve on. Thank you for saying that. Because I'm a demon on the keys. Next thing I know, we're both dead. I immediately left the lobby. In Vietnam. What are they playing for? Are they playing to win? <laughs> Stay humble. Stay humble. We are live! Welcome to, sorry, The Drop Shot, episode number 45. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. I am joined, as always, by my good friend Tanner. Tanner, say hello to everyone. Hello, everybody. And today, we will be continuing our State of the Game address, which we had started last week. Uh, it turns out that there's a lot more to talk about here than I had anticipated. Um, so we will be uh, finishing that up today. And then we're also going to be doing a gameplay breakdown of our very own Jake down uh, at the, after this pod and before we start gaming. Excuse me. Before we start gaming. So we're going to start that off over on uh, Tanner's channel after the pod. So make sure you stick around for that. I've watched this gameplay uh, beforehand in its entirety, and I'm very excited to uh, to analyze it because there's a lot of good stuff in there. A lot of good things that happened uh, to talk about that a new frog probably wouldn't see right away. And then a couple of glaring mistakes, one of which makes me fucking furious. But I'm gonna wait till Jake Down is in Discord so I can abuse him to his face. So we'll get to that. <laughs> Damn. We'll get to that, of course. That will be after this. So, And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, rate the fucking podcast five stars. And also, if you want to see the gameplay breakdowns, these will be uploaded in their entirety, with video, obviously, to the YouTube. So search for Razanon or The Drop Shot on YouTube, and you'll find our channel there's a playlist called Gameplay Breakdowns. We have one up there already, and then we'll have the one we're doing tonight up there soon. Uh, so keep that in mind. Anyways, the Patreon episode, uh, the same thing happened with the State of the Game address, happened with the Patreon episode. So we started recording it. We were like an hour and a half in, and we were exactly halfway done with yeah. the topic. So we shelved it, and then we're going to finish recording that tomorrow, Tanner? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So we're going to finish recording that tomorrow. 9 a.m. Well, let's not get crazy. And then, yeah. and then, and then that'll be, that'll be live on Patreon very soon. Maybe tomorrow, depending on how hungover I am, if not, uh, Monday or Tuesday, like the latest. Uh, and then I will instruct everyone who is a patron, uh, to, on how to, how to access that, uh, join the fucking Patreon. So what else do we have here? A great episode, by the way. I, I really liked the topic a lot more than I uh, had expected to. Um, it was a nice trip down memory lane, and I think that's going to continue um, for our second half. So that'll, that'll be fun. Uh, RGK 1988 and Sniff Sniff Hambone, change it. Thank you for the offline tier one subs, boys. I very much appreciate you. I'm honored, humbled, and of course privileged. And speaking of being honored, humbled, and privileged, uh, we've got a couple things in chat to address. Pritch! 1,500 bitties of fucking go! Mullet with the 100. Pipeline Hero with the Subarino. Welcome, brother. Honored, humbled, and of course, privileged. Hack and Zack, 100 bitties, jobless. 100 bitties of fucking go! You love to see it. Thank you, boys. Very honored, humbled, privileged. I appreciate all the support. Uh, thank all of you very fucking much. Pritch, you're insane, by the way. Uh, you're absolutely insane. And everyone else, thank you. It is very much appreciated. The the honorable, uh, honorary Damascus patron, the Vaping Viking, has joined the, the chat. Welcome, Viking. Uh, all right, so let's move on here. Um... So Tanner wrote down a little note for me to read, uh, which I will show to you, class, if you can draw your attention <laughs> to the to the notes here. Okay. Your dog shit internet announcement. 
written by Tanner, end quote. So I guess I'll address this. Uh, on the 15th, so in five days, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon before the pod. Four days. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> these, these cocksuckers at uh, Time Warner Cable or Spectrum or wherever the fuck they go by now are going to be coming to my house and installing new internet. Now, is it fiber optic? No. Am I using a new modem or router? Also no. So you might ask, well, why the fuck do they need to come to your house then? Great question. I don't know. Did I ask the people at Time Warner Cable or Spectrum or whatever the fuck they go by now, why they have to come out here? Yes. Did they have an answer for me? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I don't know why they have to come out here, but nonetheless, they're going to. If they even replace a coax cable, I'm happy with that. Tanner has a theory that they're going to run an ethernet from my curb straight to my modem, which would be cool. Maybe that would work better. Uh, so even if they're just replacing shit, that's actually kind of good. But the plan that we're buying now is 945 down and uh, 35 up. And if I was getting 35 upload speed, that is about six times more than I need. Uh, that is exactly six times more than I need uh, to stream with the highest quality that I could stream at anyway. And it would allow me to upload videos a lot more quickly so I could get like the Facebook playlist caught up and shit. I could upload more, upload more quickly. Uh, it would be really fucking nice if the internet actually worked. I think... There's just no one's going to come to my house Wednesday. That's what I think is most likely. I scheduled really? the appointment, and I wouldn't be surprised if just no one showed up, no one called me, no one emailed me, no one said anything, and then I call them and say, hey, what the fuck happened with my appointment? And then they tell me, what appointment? I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, and that's what I expect to happen. So don't expect anything. But hopefully, maybe, inshallah, read a book, uh, I'll have better internet by Wednesday and then I could actually start streaming gameplay again. What my schedule will be is mm -hmm. uh, undecided, but uh, nonetheless, I have a theory. I think they're going to come out and do everything. You're going to get faster download speed, but your upload speed isn't going to change. I think that is very possible. Because that's the way Spectrum works, how, you sh how you're sharing your node with all your dumb shit neighbors, etc. So th I don't know if that'll necessarily go up. We'll see. But I mean, maybe if you have a higher plan than your neighbor, maybe you get more data allowance or something like that. However you want to word it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with you also on that because I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, right now I pay for 210 and I get... 92 uh so i wouldn't be surprised if my upload speed just didn't change at all for sure j pharmacus welcome j pharmacus is going to be partnered very soon uh make sure you go follow him and give him some concurrent viewership what's up dude one gig down and 50 up must be fucking nice must be nice i mean 35 up would be more than i need so that would be great but am i actually going to get it who knows so We'll fucking, we'll fucking see. But nonetheless, we're going to move on here to, uh, Pipeline says, Coastal Elite, best I can buy is 200 by 20. Yeah, well, 200 by 20 would be great too, but I don't get that either. So, anyways, this next section is called, <laughs> uh, iTunes Reviews. And as you may know, if you rate the fucking podcast five stars on iTunes... You can write whatever you want, and I'll read it. And without further ado, let's get into it. This first one is from N Can See Me. Change it. Uh, the title of this review is Just Read It. And uh, here's the contents of the review. I, Nick Can 86, man of God, a pastor, <laughs> have been listening to this crazy podcast for a few months now and can honestly say that if you're looking for a COD podcast, this is the best one. Well, thank you, Nick. I'm honored, humbled, and of course privileged at this review in its entirety. And I very much uh, appreciate this very full review. So thank you, sir. Very kind of you. Next one is Dust to Clay. Great podcast. Roses are red, 
violets are blue. I love this podcast. How about you? Okay. Cute. First time catching it live on Wednesday, and I really liked it. I've been listening for a couple months on Spotify because one night I was bored and just looked up Call of Duty podcasts, and the drop shot was the first one that popped up. You love to hear Of course that. we are. We're the hottest up and coming podcast in gaming. Of course we are. Uh, keep up the good work and stay humble. Well, thank you, uh, Dust to Clay. Much appreciated, brother. Uh, this next one is by Really Sweeter Kitties. Okay. The title of this review is Spell I Cup. By the way, this is a joke that actual fourth graders make where they'll tell someone to spell I Cup and then you say I C U P and then the joke teller giggles because he's nine. So, yikes. Uh, if me and your mom had sex, I'd be your dad. <laughs> Is the title is the is the entire <laughs> entirety of this review? What a so. dumb shit, kid! Jesus. So, what I say to this is thanks for the analytics, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this next one is from Hype Gamer Twenty Twenty. Okay. Uh, the title of this review is "Y'all Are Awesome." Uh, just started listening to you guys and binged seven episodes while working on my platform. Humble brag. Would love to get you guys to review my Warzone tournament and ranked league platform to see if you guys think there's potential in it. Hype Gamer on Facebook and hypergamer.com. H-Y-P-R-G-A-M-R.com. Use vowels. Uh, is the site. <laughs> Look forward to seeing what you guys think, and I would be happy, happy to answer any questions. Tanner, any thoughts on this particular review? We don't have any questions because we don't fucking care. Join the <laughs> Discord. Christ. Okay. Join the Discord and post it there if you want us to watch it. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't feel comfortable typing in that website. Yeah. Is it a? Is it a he secure just, domain? Yeah. A, a website without us. vowels is not is, is not to yeah. be trusted. No. Uh. So hype gamer, thank you for the I'll look review. Up your Facebook. Um. I. We both work forty hours a week and host the hottest up and coming podcast in gaming. I'm not being a dick. We genuinely don't have time to like do most things that people want us to do. Um, so like Tanner said, join the discord, post it up there and uh, we'll check it out when we are uh, available to. Um, but yeah, I, it's nothing that either of us can devote a significant amount of time to, but if you post in the discord, I'll, I'll check it out. And then, uh, you know, I'll give you my my thoughts on it, but uh, but yeah, join the fucking Discord, and I appreciate the review, dude. Uh, this next one is from Beavis six eight six eight. The title of this review is "Greetings uh, to any of my collegiate brethren." Rush Alpha Sigma Phi, stay humble. Okay, so this guy's trying to get you to join his frat. That's the worst review we've ever gotten for it's, sure. It's not great. Yeah, it's not <laughs> great. So. I was Michael from Tanner, Michael. Uh, I, I lived with like my best friend in an apartment off campus, but very close to campus in college. And he joined a fraternity and I didn't. Ooh. And let me tell you something. That's the way to go. <laughs> I didn't have to do the homoerotic uh, rushing as they call it, which is like joining. So you have to like suck 10 dicks with a blindfold on while you make a pentagram uh, in the middle of your fucking frat house. Just some real weird gay shit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course, but it's fucking weird. Because they all pretend that they are the most masculine, heterosexual men on planet Earth. And then every single ritual for every single fraternity is fucking gay. Now again, not that there's anything wrong with that, but don't, not at all. But, but don't pretend... Like, this isn't some gay shit when it is some gay shit. Just be honest about it. So, anyways, it was great because he did all that Razano sus things, joined the frat, and then my apartment was the frat fucking party house, so all the parties would just come to me, and I didn't have to join the frat, I didn't have to go to fucking frat meetings, I just got all the benefits and none of the cons. It was fantastic. So... Don't rush Alpha Sigma Phi. Trick your dumbass friend into rushing Alpha Sigma Phi and then leech all the benefits off of him. That's my advice. 
and thank you, Beavis. I hope you're doing well, shoving ice cubes up each other's asses. Did Michael have any <coughs> crazy stories of things that happened ever? Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, I would like to hear some of those. Yes, he sure did. That's uh, that's for another time. But yeah, that's, it's that's not for a joke, not dude. live on Twitch. It's actually not a joke. Every frat I've ever heard of in real life, there's some homoerotic shit going on. I don't, I can't explain it, but it's, it's fucking weird. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it is odd. It is not what you would expect. No, yeah. Nonetheless. Joey had some stories too. Of, yeah. of course he did. Yeah. It's fucking strange, but nonetheless, it's not a problem. Uh, BFFKBDE says my KD went from 0.1 to 10.0. Damn. Uh, this is the best up-and-coming pod in the gaming industry. Closer than Tanner usually gets it. I am rarely humbled, but constantly honored slash privileged to listen to this pod. Not sure why you needed to make that delineation there. Interesting. Uh, check out my podcast, Mic Drop Radio, where we cover all sports slash political events. We have interviews with first-round NBA draft picks, United States Senators... Mandalorian actors, those don't exist. Mandalorians are fictitious Star Wars characters, and many more. Keep up the good work, and God bless America, you stupid wench. Tanner, any thoughts on uh, on this review? U.S. Senator, okay. Um, that's, I don't even know where to start with that podcast. Everything from first round NBA draft picks to U.S. Senators, what? So the, my first thought is this is fake news. Because if there's some podcast with fucking the United States senators on it, not even congressmen, dude, this guy's going uh -huh. senators, I would have heard about it. So Tanner's going to do some research into mic drop radio, uh, and we'll, we'll see what our, our research finds. But um, once again, BFF, I would, I would echo the statement we made earlier, which is join the fucking Discord and then post your podcast there, and we'll check it out. It is not fake news. Okay. So, I don't think it's an actual senator, though. I think it's somebody running. Dr. Manny Sethi. Okay. You heard of that person? No. Okay, let's look it up. Yeah, maybe people running for senator, which is much less... Um, which is He's very running. cool. Which is very cool. It's awesome. But don't say U.S. senator if it's just some dude running for the Senate. Because those are different, right? Because I could run for the Senate. Actually, I couldn't. I'm too young. Uh, but anyways, fake news. That's cool though. Even if you had you someone, are fake news. even if you had someone running for the Senate on your podcast, that's actually fucking dope. So yeah, uh, it is. BFF, join the fucking Discord, and if you link your podcast, I will check it out. The reality is, with all these people saying check out my thing, it's not that I'm not willing to. It's that I'm not gonna remember. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. I've got shit to do. I've got fucking the hottest up and coming podcast in gaming to manage, run, etc. <laughs> so I'm not going to remember to listen to fucking Mic Drop Radio. Nothing against Mic Drop Radio. I'm just not going to remember. But if you join the fucking Discord and post it there, then I will remember because it'll be in front of me. So do that. And thank he you does for the remember. Yeah. Thank you for the review. So. And this last one is from Spellegri88. The title of this review is SPLRZ in all caps. Okay. Uh, great listen for anyone within the COD community. These guys should be getting some money from iDub for actually telling us the real patch slash release notes. Wrong. Great. Okay. Great tips I have used in Warzone. Great weapon breakdowns, etc. Keep up the great work, guys, and keep telling it like it is. Also want to throw a shout out to my squad mates, ZTAC and Greens Crest 209. Stay humble. Change tell, it. Tell Green to absolutely change it. ZTAC, I'm fine with. Um, and also, uh, why did you title this review SPLRZ? Maybe that's <laughs> your. Maybe that's you and your frog uh, teammates clan tag. That's my best guess. But again, change it. I don't know what this means. No one else will. Uh, and also, thanks for the analytics, you stupid bitch. So, uh, Tanner, no announcements from you, brother. No. Okay. Well, without further ado, if you were listening for the jingle, here it is. Uh, 
All right. So, as I said in the announcements, uh, which you may not have listened to if you were skipping toward the jingle, we are going to be continuing our state of the game address. Uh, this was taking longer than anticipated, so we shelved the latter portion of the state of the game address for today, uh, which will be, we will be continuing right where we fucking left off. So we started by talking about pretty much weapons, weapon balance, and the weapon meta in general. And now we are going to get into our next section, which is the maps. So uh, you guys pretty much know my opinion on this, but nonetheless, I will refresh your memory in the strongest of terms. Not too much to say here, honestly. Uh, the maps were fucking terrible at launch. And this can't be overstated. So again, I'm, I'm going to pause for effect when I say this. So I want you, after I pause, to let this sink in. The maps at launch were all fucking dog shit. All of them. They were all bad. Arklov Peak was... Decent. Not great, but decent. But most of the maps were fucking terrible. If we rated each map at launch on a 1 to 10 scale, and we aggregated and averaged the map rating for this game at launch, the average would literally be 3 to 4 out of 10. Are you... Is that about correct, Tanner? The average, you said? Yeah. So if we rated each map out of 1 to 10 and then averaged those ratings, what would the total average be for the maps at launch? Yeah, that's that's about accurate. Yeah. Maybe even lower. Maybe, like Arc actually maybe lower. Because like Arc Law for me was like a 7, 7.5, but every other map at launch pretty much was like a 3 or below. I think Ramaza was like, I think Ramaza's like a 6. It's not bad. Well, Ramaza was shit. But once they made it 10s, it got a lot better. So True. at launch, it was still shit just because it wasn't in 10s. True. Yeah. Uh, Gunrunner, too big. I mean, even the good maps. Like, Gunrunner's not bad, but it's too big, which makes Hackney. it bad. You know? Hackney, Hackney Yard. Uh, how do you feel about Hackney Yard? I liked it at first, and then I kind of don't like it. Um... Just got boring. I don't know. Couldn't agree more. Hackney is probably like a five or six for me. I think the story of Hackney Yard is the same as the story of Kandor Hideout. At first, we like the maps a lot more than we will later like them because at first they appear to be pretty good. And then everyone learns where the insane power positions and camp spots are. And because every map has those positions, then once everyone's learned about those, the experience is dramatically, uh, you know, ruined. That's exactly what happened with Kandor. Like, at first, we really enjoyed it. But number one, it's too big. Number two, if someone is upstairs at mid on Kandor, or two or three people are, you're never getting up there. There's just no way. So once people learned the map more and started to exploit that fact... That's that place on the map. It became shit. Like I really liked Kandor and now I do not like it. Because it's too big. And that fucking mid, you can't go there. Unless you're camping it yourself. Uh, and I think Hackney Yard, you can largely say the same for that map. Like it's very easy to camp mid on Hackney. Or camp uh, that building that is in the middle, but it is off center. It's like on the edge of the map. What's it called, dude? You know what I'm talking about, Tanner, you dumb bitch. Not the B building, but the one adjacent to it. It's, as, it's just as center, but it's on the other side. Talking about on Hackney? Yes, Hackney Yard, the map. You know how there's the, two um, buildings everyone yeah, yeah, camps? Yeah. What's that one called? Office? Office, office building. Thank you, office. Yes. Yes, exactly. So... So, the, so yeah, so the maps at launch, to get back to the, the point here, uh, were fucking terrible, by and large. Um, and Six's maps in particular, so like not Arklov, uh, contributed heavily to us being unable 
to enjoy our otherwise favorite game mode, which was Domination. That's like all we liked. It, it's not all we liked, but it's we. it was our favorite for sure in BO4 and Hardpoint. Uh, we love both of those because it forces people to move. Spawns become more predictable so you don't get shot in the back as often, etc. cetera. Uh, but when the maps are as terrible, especially the sixes maps, as these were at launch, uh, you can't play Domination and have fun. You have to pick one. You, you can say, oh, do I want to have fun? Or do I want to play Domination, my favorite game mode? Pick one. Because you can't do both. <laughs> you actually can't do both. This was especially true at launch. Um, so then, however, we got some new maps added. Uh, November added uh, Shoot House and Farmland. So this was like a month after launch. Both of which I very much enjoy. Uh, before I get into my little sub points here, Tanner, what is your opinion on Shoot House and then on Farmland? I'm going to go blow my nose. <clears throat> Shoot House is probably the best map in the game. It's up there. Um, it's really fun. I mean, it's like a classic three lane. It's got a, it's, it's, issues i don't like the junkyard portion it's too messy um i don't like not being able to see that clearly over the top of the cars when you're pushing on that side it makes it really annoying um i just kind of wish that was more open or maybe there was there's like how many cars are there like five if there were like two that would be okay or something um but i don't like that portion of it Mid is, it's a fantastic map for leveling your weapons, I will say that, because you can just camp mid, mount up there, and get, like, literally, like, 30 long shots and mounted kills a game, if you want. So it's good for that type of stuff. It's a fast-paced map, so I like that. There's a lot of flanking. Farmland is a really good map. It's a really good ground war map. At launch, it had shit frame rate, so it was... Wasn't the greatest to play on PC, just because we're used to playing on higher frame rate than that. Um, also, Farmland has been taken out of the game for basically a total of a month and a half for them to fix various bugs. So <laughs> True. Keep that in mind. It basically came out in January because of that. But um, I like both those maps, yeah. And it was, it was a nice addition. I remember when they announced Shoot House. And looking back, it's because everybody was shitting on the maps. We don't need, shoot house may have been a map that was planned for later in the life cycle, but everyone was hating on the ship maps in this game. And they're like, oh, we need to throw a three lane map in there now. So they dropped shoot house pretty quickly. And it's a good thing they did. Interesting. Because I think I think that brought a lot of people back. I mean, look at people like Syrian. Syrian he probably would have stopped. Example. Ooh, he would have stopped you. playing the game all the way back in November if shoot house didn't come out. I'm dead. I, I don't think he'd be playing the game right now. Well, he still isn't. But yeah, so uh, that's we'll uh, that. yeah. Okay, interesting. So yeah, uh, Shoot House and Farmland. So Shoot House is again, it's kind of like Candor for me, but a lot lesser of an extent. Uh, when Shoot House came out, I loved the map. I thought it was really, really, really fucking good. And I still feel that way, but just like I was talking about with Candor Mid, uh, once people played a lot of Shoot House, they learned that the Junkyard is such a powerful spot on the map to be. And if you really want to be a piece of shit and camp junkyard, you can, and it's hard to kill people there. Like if someone of equal skill is camping junkyard and I'm trying to come in, it's going to be very fucking hard for me to do. There's a lot of clutter. Like Tanner was saying, there are a lot of points of uh, cover and there are really, there are only three entryways and they're pretty easy to cover. Uh, so that is, very strongly detracts from my enjoyment of that map. But it's still three lanes. You can still avoid Junkyard altogether and still move around the map pretty much fine. Uh, so all in all, I think Shoot House is one of, if not the best map in this game. Uh, certainly the best original map from Modern Warfare, I would say. I can't think of another one, but maybe there will be mm -hmm. a, a counterexample. Um and then Farmland, yeah, is great. It's my favorite uh, ground war map. But like all ground war maps, it's not that fun. Because tanks. Uh, I don't know why they put tanks in ground war. 
we'll get into that more. Uh, but Farmland was an also a very good map that I just think was just fucking ruined by tanks. So, yep. Um, every single one. Every single one. Actually, it's so disgusting. So uh, in season one, we got Crash, Shipment, Vacant, and Port of Verdansk. Uh, Tanner, your thoughts on Crash? Crash is one of my favorite all-time maps in Call of Duty. Uh, join the Patreon and maybe you'll hear that in our upcoming episode. Something about Crash. Uh, shipment. Crash plays, it did, it played kind of weird at first, but I think it's because I wasn't used to how the people play in this shit game. Everybody plays differently than they used to because this game awards camping and being dog shit. And the mini so I yeah. Yeah. So I hated Crash at first. Um, I'm fine with it now. I think it's just more because I've gotten used to the game and how weird it plays. So I really like Crash. Shipment is fun only if you have about 30 minutes to play and want to just get in the action right away or if you're trying to level guns yeah uh vacant is awful in this game don't like it at all i was never the biggest fan of vacant uh back in call of duty 4 but again just with the lighting and other things the visibility in this game it makes it even worse because there's a lot of dark corners that people hide in um so i'm not really a fan of that port of verdansk is um i was gonna say it's dog shit but it's it's really not it's again i think mostly because of the tanks it's not if the tanks weren't in there it wouldn't be that bad really it's not a horrible layout i mean there's some there's some areas to fight that are really fun like the vacant area right um but it's just ruined by tanks and their shit respawn timer where they come back immediately after they blow up yeah so okay interesting thoughts uh crash yeah i had the exact same experience with crash as you i was very excited for it to come out because it's a very good map and I loved it in uh, older CODs. And then I hated it in this game. But then, like you said, you kind of acclimate to it, figure it out. And now I like Crash. It's a good map. It's good on sixes and it's good on tens, which is interesting. Vacant, I agree with you a thousand percent. I never loved Vacant and it's even worse in this game. Uh, so I, I have no strong opinions about Vacant. It's not the worst map. But it's not great. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. fun. I'll dodge it if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vacant was, um, sorry, Vacant was yeah. one of the maps in the Call of Duty 4 competitive rotation. And in that rotation, it was probably my least favorite map. So I've never loved it. Nobody loved it even back then. Uh, but it's a lot worse now for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. And then Shipment. I actually love Shipment. Sadly... Uh, the spawns are terrible, so if you've played other games, no other shipment iteration in an old COD was such that if you spawn on this corner, you can shoot this corner, and there's a line of sight there. So, so you imagine there's spawn one, two, three, four. Spawns one and two that are closest to each other, you can see each other. So you can spawn in someone else on the opposite, on not the opposite, but the closest corner to you, because it's not a perfect square, it's like a rectangle. So the closest corner to you, where you, wherever you spawn, the closest corner to you, they have a direct line of sight to you and they can immediately start shooting you. That's incredibly dumb. And no other shipment map has had a line of sight like that. And I don't know why they did that. Just tilt the container so it's not possible. Uh, so, so even shipment, which I think is a very fun map, uh, they've, they've, they've tried their absolute hardest to ruin it. But nonetheless, it's still fun. And I give zero credit, zero credit, to the devs of this team for why it's fun. It is all Infinity Ward of fucking 15 years ago that made shipment fun. And despite them trying to ruin it in this iteration with the stupid spawns and the line of sight issue, it's still fun. Uh, a port? I fucking hate. Uh, number one, because of the tanks, as Tanner said. Number two, there are too many places from which you can get sniped. Now, I understand that people want to snipe, especially on ground war. Great. There don't need to be as many as there are on port. Those fucking, I don't know what they are. Cranes, uh, the things on like the side where you climb up the ladder for 45 minutes and then you're on top of the thing. I don't know what it is, actually. It's, just it's a, a crane. Okay, it's a crane, whatever. It's a type of crane, yes. 
Okay, well, those types of cranes should be removed. Too many, too many places to get sniped from. So running from a building to like another building is impossible on port because you can get sniped from a bunch of rooftops, which is kind of fine because it's, you know, a ground war map. There should be buildings to snipe from. I'm okay with that, but there's too many. So the cranes is the easiest one. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Uh, and the tanks fucking ruin it. So I hate port. Uh, and then season two added Rust, Atlas Superstore, Candor Hideout, and then uh, Boneyard. I don't know what the first name of that is, and I never will because I don't care enough. Uh, so Rust, Atlas, Candor, and Boneyard, the ground war map. Uh, Tanner, your thoughts? Um, overall, season two definitely added some pretty good maps. Rust, though, is by far the worst. The visibility is, as we've said, probably 45 different times on this podcast. Rust literally has the worst visibility in the game, and it's because they have floating dust particles everywhere for no goddamn reason. So Infinity Ward, go fuck yourself. Please take if that was removed, the map wouldn't be bad. If it was just perfectly clear visibility, I would like the map. The layout's OK. They didn't design the map, as you were just saying about shipment. They didn't design it. They just brought it back, but they ruined it with the visibility. And just shit all At over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Atlas Superstore, a top three map in the game for me. I really like this map. Um, I do very well on it for some reason. I don't know why. I got That's where both of us actually got the nuke to get our nuclear calling card that we were trying for Correct. for so long. We Correct. were trying on Ground War for two days straight, playing 10 hours a day. Couldn't get it. We How got many to 20, 20... 28s and 29s did we oh get? Oh my god, dude. Combined. We actually... Like 12, actually. Yeah, no, we could not. Yeah, we literally could not get it. Yeah. It was we got to 28 and 29 so many times and I couldn't finish it on ground war. So, so then I went and played tens literally after three rounds. I got the nuke. So I was like, OK, play tens. And then Raz got it like later that day or the next day. So I got both on Atlas. Day. Yeah, that's a really fun map to me. Um, there's a lot of places to camp, but people don't really seem to camp on that map. I don't know why they seem to move a lot more. Nobody's mounted up on too many corners. Uh, Candor is a good map, I think. I still like it. The lighting is awful when you're running one direction. I don't know which direction is on the mouth, map, north or south. Um, you're just blinded by the sun and you can't see anything. So once again, Infinity War developers, change it. <laughs> Remove that sun. Uh, it pisses me off. It's a good map other than that. It really reminds me of Crossfire and Call of Duty 4, just long and it kind of does it's not it's not straight like crossfire is it's got a Ooh. little angle to it but you know that's what they were thinking what a good comparison it. what a actually yeah, yeah. really good comparison because you're right that street totally reminds me of crossfire yeah. so that was like the first thing i thought when i played good that map so point. i good i point. i still like uh candor just um the lighting's not the greatest and boneyard is also an excellent uh ground war map very, very good ground war map, actually. Okay. Um, but as we've said already three times, it would be better without tanks. Agreed. So I, I differ from Tanner here a lot. Uh, number one, Rust is awful. For all of the reasons Tanner said, uh, well, well, only the one reason Tanner said is that uh, the dust particles fucking ruin the visibility. True. However, here's where Tanner and I differ. Even if the visibility was perfect on Rust, it's still a shit map. Here's the, here's the takeaway. Rust was never a good map. Rust was, mm. Rust was never, uh, Rust was well, never a good map. It well, is way too easy to fucking camp mid, go up top, and just r rapaciously curb stomp everybody. Well, it's way too uh, easy, okay. dude. Every time I play okay. Rust, if I get very frustrated, I say fuck this. Go up top, VTOL 90% of the time. It's just so easy to just shoot down on people, especially when, like, you know where your team is. You know where they're spawning, one of four spots. So you see your team in one corner. You look at the corner, the two corners farthest from where your teammates are, shoot down on them, and then if you start getting in danger, back up. It's so easy to abuse that map. And it was not, it's not only not good in this game for that reason and the dust, but again, it was never good. Now you seem to disagree with me. Do you not think that that mid part is fucking not, not only a good spot, but a broken spot? 
Okay. It's not a great map. It's not a bad map. It's Hey, it's not a top 10 Call of Duty map of all time. It's not a sure. top 15 map of all time. Okay. But it's also not horrible. I think the main reason people always liked it was because of the trick shotting dipshits in 2012. That's the reason they all liked it. And so they yeah. still pretend and think it was an amazing map, but it's because they were trying to get one clip and it took them 12 hours before they finally got that clip and got to post it on YouTube. And that's what they remember. So that's they still think it's fun and it's a really good map when it's just it's a good map if the visibility was better. OK, but that's, it's not top tier. That's a fair opinion. OK, I'll OK, I'll take that. I'll take that. So um, so Atlas Superstore uh, kind of like I agree and disagree with Tanner here. First of all, I always. Well, let me not be crazy. I very often do very well on this map and I'm with Tanner that I don't know why. And I've thought about this a lot and I don't know why I do well on Atlas. It doesn't make sense to me. It must be the only thing that's different about Atlas than like every other map is there is cover everywhere, everywhere there's cover. And I think that's probably why Tanner and I do so well, because I can't think of any other variable that would account for how well we do on this map. So I think it's probably because you can always take cover so you can move around the map and never be punished by being in the middle of the open. So if you take like Grozna Raid and you wanna have fun, you can't. Now, why, why, why is it impossible? Again, why is it impossible to have fun on Grozna? Because if you move, there are way too many wide open areas where if you're trying to go from one building to another, you have to go through some area where there's no cover. And if you start getting shot, you're dead. That is the, the opposite is true for Atlas. If you're trying to move anywhere at any time ever on Atlas, there is cover within six meters of you. So I think the reason we do so well is because we're allowed to move around the map. And if we get surprised from anywhere, cover is ready at hand, Heidegger, read a book, uh, for us to utilize and then start fragging out. With that said, I actually don't like Atlas that much. I don't like have a bunch of fun on it. It's okay to me. Like it's totally middle of the road mediocre for me. I have no strong opinions on it either way. I don't have a strong opinion thinking it's good, nor do I have a strong opinion thinking it's bad. So Atlas, just kind of fucking weird. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Candor used to be very fun for me. But as I was saying earlier, it's too big and that middle building is too strong of a position and it's too easy to camp. Uh, and then lastly, I'm a thousand percent with Tanner here. Boneyard is an exceptional ground war map. It's really fucking good and it is a perfectly designed uh, ground war map in my view. Now, why is that? What's different about this ground war map and most other ones? There are no eight story buildings. Most of the buildings... There's four buildings, actually. There's one spawn building, the other spawn building, and then the two buildings on Scrapyard that are opposite each other. Those two buildings are three stories. The two spawn buildings are two stories, but they're so far away that no one camps them anyway. So, so therefore, Boneyard becomes a good map because there aren't a bunch of buildings for you to fucking get camped in from and then shit on, which is the opposite for a map like uh, Tavorsk, where there's buildings <laughs> oh everywhere, God. exactly, and we'll get there, where there are buildings everywhere, and you can get shit on uh, from, from story one through 16, plus the rooftop, so 17, times 12, because there are buildings everywhere. So that's why Boneyard's really good and Tavorsk is shit is because Boneyard, you don't have to worry about that. If you're getting shot in the back from Boneyard, you only have to look at one place on the Z-axis, on the ground. Whereas in Tavorsk, you have to look at 17 places on the Z-axis, uh, which is, you, you know, you can't move. So, uh, so that's how I feel on that. Now, let me catch up on uh, chat here real quick. First of all, what do we have here? Matt Dad, thank you for the host. Three viewers, you love to see it. Sniff, sniff, <laughs> hambone, change it. With the 500 biddies, let's fucking go. 
Sniff, welcome. <laughs> Shit. I'm, I'm honored, I'm humbled, and I am privileged, sir. Uh, it is much appreciated. Appreciated. So drunk. Um, and Jake down with the gifted sub to Hidden Chaos. Oh, fucking no. You love to see it, boys. Thank you so much. Matt Dad, Sniff Sniff, and Jake down. I'm honored, humbled, and privileged. And Sniff Sniff with another fucking gifty boy. The Suicidal Play-Doh. Okay. Weird name, but I kind of like it, actually. That's... Uh, okay. <laughs> interesting. Suicidal Play-Doh, welcome to this small but vibrant and extremely humble community. And Sniff Sniff, Jake down, Matt Dad again. I thank you all very, so very goddamn much. Honored, humbled, and privileged. Um, what do we have here? Grozna is AIDS. Thank you, Anal. I agree. I agree so much. S sniff Sniff is your brother, Matt Dad? Damn, that's suicidal Play-Doh. Oh, suicidal Play-Doh is, okay. Suicidal <laughs> Play-Doh, homicidal Lego. Okay, I was gonna try and make a rap, but I Yeah, can't. just keep keep going with the just podcast. Keep it moving, okay. The Drop right, Shot of yeah. Call of Duty podcast. All right, so we'll keep it moving, but uh, thank you boys for the support. It is much appreciated. Uh, and then in season three, we got some more maps. Backlot. I actually can't remember Backlot. What is that? Call of Duty 4 map. Um, it's got that little got building it. at mid. Okay. Got it. You can get yeah. on top of. Yeah. Uh, Backlot, Sawmill, Anaya Incursion, and Hardhat. Tanner, your thoughts. Backlot, I enjoy. Uh, hated it at first again because the visibility in this game. And they also changed some weird things. Like in one of the spawns, they kind of added like an extra building you can go in. I mean, it doesn't really change how it's played, but I don't know. Just kind of weird. Uh, you'll pretty much learn like any Call of Duty 4 map that they bring back, I usually like. So, and Vacant, like I said, it's usually okay. They just visibility bad. So, so Backlot's... They'll what? bring it back. They'll make it worse, but we'll like it anyway. But they will they will universally make every remade, remade map worse without exception. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Sawmill, I have, uh, I've played literally two rounds on, so I'm not going to comment. It's a map. It doesn't seem horrible. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say about that. It's a map. Hard map. hat. Hard hat's good. It's fun. Um, I still just don't like the big fucking pipe in mid, but I try to just avoid it as most as I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hard hat's a good map. Good visibility on it, which I like. Um, I don't know, not much. I haven't played a whole lot of hard hat either, but I enjoy it. See highlighted. Oh, um, yeah, Anaya Incursion. So for Anaya Incursion, they here's what they did. Anaya is a fantastic ground war map, the best ground war map in the game, by the way, because there's no tanks. That's the main reason. Um, so what they did was they said, oh, OK, let's make a smaller tens map out of Anaya. So they took the literal worst portion of the fucking ground war map. They barricaded it off and they said, oh, let's make this a 6v6 map. And they added it in the game. And then a few weeks later, after everyone complained, they made it a 10v10 map. They didn't. But it's it's tens. It's tens now. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Regular Anaya Palace is still in tens. I promise. I played it recently. An eye incursion is not intense. Should it be intense? Is it? Wait, are you serious? I'm. Are I'm, you sure? No, I'm 80% sure. I'm 80% sure. Any confirmations in the chat? So we're going to get some intel Jake from Down chat. Jake Down always knows everything. Jake Down, give us the answer. Let us know if an eye incursion exists in tens or if it's regular ass Anaya in tens um because i'm pretty yeah. sure it's just regular ass Anaya, which is dumb but i'm interesting on. to know that regardless though it's a shit map so Did i don't you just care. say i'm interesting it's, to know that <laughs> i'm interested to know that <laughs> um so it's a shit map anyways doesn't matter don't mm. care if it's 20 verse 20 5v5 it's the worst part True. of Anaya that i that's actually the part of Anaya and ground war that we always avoid you realize that, right? And then yes. they make that into a smaller map. It's the worst. <laughs> exactly. It's the worst. Exactly. Exactly. These developers have some... They just love multiple story maps. That's what they do. <laughs> just give me a flat... Give me a PUBG map, not a single goddamn building. Just I actually flat, almost spit hills. out my beer. 
That was so don't, funny. Just get rid. I don't ever want to see <laughs> stairs or a ladder again. Just get rid of them. Dude, you couldn't be more correct. These guys love fucking eight-story buildings. God, it's so awful. Holy Gift fuck, curse in the chat. Almost positive it's in tens. I play hardcore 10v10, and it's the main map we always end up playing. Okay, well, you're it also, could, it, you're also could be so drunk by then that you could just be playing Palace at mid and thinking it's incursion gift. So, get shit on. <laughs> Damn. Joking. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Jake no one's positive. You can all suck me off. I don't think Anaya Incursion <laughs> is intense. I think it's still Anaya Palace. <laughs> Why do we have to suck? Why does it matter? I don't care who's right or wrong. It's a shit map. That's what I said. That's but good. it's definitely intense. You dumb Tan fuck. You stupid bitch. Okay, Tanner's right. It actually doesn't matter. Okay, so let's uh, let's let let me give my input. I pretty much agree with Tanner completely. Backlot. I f I liked Backlot as soon as it came out, and I still like it. I think Backlot is one of the very, very, very few maps, maybe one of three max, and I can't think of the other two, that genuinely plays well with no, uh, it plays well full stop with no caveats in this game. I don't know why, but I love Backlot. I liked it in the old games, and for whatever reason, Backlot plays excellently in this game in my view, and I fucking really like it. This is the best sixes maps in this game, uh, and the reason, but it's a remake. So the best original, MW 2019 original map in this game is uh, Shoot House, but overall, Backlot, I think is the best. I fucking, I think it plays excellently. It's really, really good. Uh, Sawmill, I've played it more than Tanner, but less than pretty much every other map in this game. Uh, I'm kind of with him as well here. It's a map. That's it. No strong feelings about it. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. It's three lanes. There's a mid building. Um, there's no three story buildings. There's just one two story. There's more than one. There's I think two three uh, two two story buildings. Everything else is like a one story building or I'm not even sure there are any other buildings besides those but um there are points of cover, sufficient amount. I think if I played more Sawmill, I would like it more and more. But I'm not sure. It's hard for me to form a strong opinion, but I think it's a pretty fucking good map. Uh, Anaya Incursion, a thousand percent with Tanner. They took the worst part of Anaya Palace and made it its own map for sixes. Uh, and it's terrible, unsurprisingly, because they took mid, which is exactly like Tanner said, the precise area you fucking avoid in Anaya Palace when you're playing Ground War is, of course, the only part of the fucking new map they make. Uh, and then Hard Hat, I think, also plays very well in this game. I really like Hard Hat. Um, Tanner said that he hates the pipe at mid. So do I, but that's actually not a fault of MW 2019. It's a fault of the map, and I wouldn't even call it a fault because I think the concept is that it is a... High risk, high reward area of the map where the risk is if you peek it and someone's peeking you, you're dead 100% because there's nowhere to go because you're in the pipe. Um, but if there isn't anyone peeking it, the high reward is you can cut through the map very quickly through this like shortcut kind of deal. So I like hard hat. I think it plays really well in this game and the visibility is quite good, which I was skeptical if it was going to be. But it turns out the, the, uh, the visibility is quite good. Um, and then in season four, we got Scrapyard, Cheshire Park, and Promenade. So, uh, Tanner, your thoughts. Scrapyard is okay. Um, that one stupid, uh, truck or whatever it is that's on fire at that one point and ruins the visibility, the which smoking, by the way, yeah. isn't there on the ground war map. If you play Boneyard, it's not dark black smoke ruining your visibility. So I don't know why they added that in on the map. And quick question. Mm -hmm. Was that smoke there on the original scrapyard? I doubt it. If it was, it was very light. Do you it know wasn't. the answer? Yeah, okay. it wasn't. Yeah. So uh, the point I'm making is that they took a good map, remade it, and then shit on it. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. That's, yeah, that's IW 2019 <laughs> yeah, game IW of the year 2019. dev team. Exactly. Um... 
Che- Cheshire? Cheshire? Che- Cheshire? Have you ever heard any, of uh, Cheshire? Any, yes, the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland. Any, any Brits in the chat? <laughs> okay. Cheshire. Um, Cheshire. So I've also only played that map like three times. It seemed fun. I'm a little disappointed it's at night. You know, it's like... Yes. It's similar. Like the lighting is the same as Piccadilly. But it's actually weird because the visibility is still better than a map like Rust, which is during the day. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Um, <laughs> so it's it's like a three lane map. There's also there's buses and shit in the way, but it, it doesn't seem like it's a bad map. It's kind of fun if you're sniping and you can like jump around corners real quick and get some close kills of people running up the side. Mid is pretty fun to fight over. So I haven't played it a ton, but it's pretty fun. And Promenade is. Wow. How do you even describe Promenade, dude? Oh, boy. Oh, I mean, it is. Quite literally a one lane map. It's a one lane map. Um, yeah, that's how there are parts of the map that are bugged and you can't shoot through. I don't know if those are fixed. Oh I really highly God. doubt it. Yes. There, there are spots where you'll be crouched. I'm not kidding. Three feet to the right of a wall and you start shooting and your bullets hit an invisible wall in front of you. So it's all sorts of messed up. I don't know if they fixed it. But no, it's. Almost every map ends in DEFCON. Um, I mean, any low cappers in the chat, we get a lot of white foss on it. It's very fun. Don't get me wrong. It's it's the worst map in the game, but don't get me wrong. If you're running kill chain, you go on such high kill streaks and you get a white foss every goddamn time. And your white foss gets 12, 14 kills. It's a lot. So it's nutty because they have nowhere to hide. But um, again, it's almost like they said, hey, Let's take the worst part of the ground worm. I mean, of the um, war zone map, map that nobody likes. They have nobody a lot gives a of fuck area about. to pick from, by the way, right? Yeah. Yeah, but they still pick yeah. the worst possible pop yeah. spot. So The yeah. worst. I mean, even out of that whole promenade area, there were better spots they could have picked. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, ah, exactly. I, don't, I don't know what's going on. They made that <laughs> a map. So hey, I would rather them add stadium as a map and us having to run around the sides of stadium that we can't get inside of than play promenade. That would have been a better map idea. So Dude, figure actually... it out. I don't know where they hire these devs from. Figure it out. It's such uh, a dumb, uh, lazy shit map. Lazy. Is, but yeah, when you play with us, we win 100% of the time we drop white foss. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to start with promenade while these ideas are fresh. Number one, the bug Tanner's talking about. Oh, just ta lazy is the word we could use for this whole game. Here's one example. You can be like looking at some dude and you have a clear line of sight to him. There's no cover between you and him. And if you start shooting him, your bullets just don't register because they hit some invisible wall. So there are many, there are more, there are more than five spots of that kind on, uh, what's his promenade. Promenade, yep. Yeah. Where it's just like you have a clear line of sight, but you still can't do damage to the person. Uh, so buggy is all fuck. Terrible. Um, also, it is literally a one lane map. Um, it is it is insane to me that this became a, a map. It's fucking disgusting. Um, and as Tanner said, it's very easy to get kill streaks. Uh, if you snipe on this map, you can get a nuke pretty easily i mean it's not hard you just you hold one fucking area line of sight wait for kids to run and you kill them because you basically can't get flanked because it's a one lane map uh one thing tanner didn't mention is that one of the spawns is so much more heavily favored than the other that it is i mean it's almost like a deterministic fucking map like Depending on which spawn you get, you you already know if you're going to win or lose. One of the spawns is just so much better than the other. I don't know which is better. I, I do know which is better, but I can't describe it to you guys right now. But if you play the map five times or more, you'll figure it out. Take note of where you spawn and whether you won or lost, and that will comport 100% of the time for every other match. Uh, so Promenade is the worst map I've ever fucking seen. Something else we forgot to mention about Promenade is it has tanks. Oh, yeah, which is fun and exciting. Yeah, on a so, one-laid map, by the way. Like, so dumb. So dumb. Indeed. Uh, Scrapyard, it's okay. I don't know. 
Scrapyard was really good in old games. It's not that way in this game at all. So the smoke that they added definitely uh, uh, detracts from uh, the goodness of this map. But even if the smoke wasn't there, this map still wouldn't play as well as it used to. Unlike Backlot, and I don't know why. But Scrapyard just doesn't play that well to me, and I'm not sure why that is. But I haven't played it too much to be able to give you a more informed uh, view on that. And then Cheshire Park. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of with Tanner. I, again, I haven't played this too much. But what I have played, it's pretty good. It's pretty fun, but it, it doesn't stand out to me. Again, this is a map. But one, one thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about these maps about which we're totally apathetic. Being apathetic about a new map in this game means it's better than 80% of all the other maps. So the fact that I'm totally apathetic about Cheshire Park means it's better than every map that came out at launch. So all these new maps that we're apathetic about are good additions to the game, which is sad but it's true because I would rather be apathetic about a map than think it's fucking terrible. Like a uh, fucking Piccadilly or a Ni or <laughs> excuse me, Azir cave. Uh, so when we're saying over and over, we're apathetic about this map or whatever, should that be a good thing? No, of course not. But in this case it is because all the maps, because the map pool that it's getting added to is full of dog shit maps that are far worse than apathetic. If that makes sense. Yes. So, uh, Hack and Zack 400 bits. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Hack and Zack, I'm honored, humbled, and of course privileged. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, very kind of you, sir. Much obliged. Much obliged. So, uh, to, to wrap this up here, um, overall, just like I was just saying, the state of the maps now versus launch are way better, way better. Even the original maps, the new maps that were added post-launch, such as Shoot House, Candor, um, are pretty good, better than launch maps. Um, and this is of course not to mention great maps that are great only by virtue of the fact that they were not, they, that they were not designed by this dev team, namely Backlot, um, shipment, uh, hard hat, so, so on and so forth. Uh, Tanner, what's your overall opinion on the state of the game with respect to maps? The maps are in a decent place. Not as good as other Call of Duty games, but Not there's as good also as any other Call of Duty game. There's also a lot more though. So that's kind of something you have to weigh, but at launch, just remember for weeks, in weeks, we were playing Piccadilly in Azir Cave, not realizing that Tens was a lot better. And we were playing those shit maps on 6v6. I don't know how people still do it. Like, I'll, I'll just find some random streamer sometime on Twitch, pop in, and I see them playing Azir Cave. And, like, they're not complaining about it, and they're just playing it. I'm just like, wow, it's... I don't know. I can't do that. Like, that's... It's I... just... They're, yeah. they're such bad maps, and that's what we played with at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. So, thank God for Shoot House. That's all I'm going to say. True. True. That's why they're forced to have these fucking... There's always a Shoot House shipment, or Shoot House and shipment, or Shoot House and shipment and Rust playlist 24-7. Yeah. Every single time there's a patch. Because they recognize that all of their maps are shit, and they have to offer something good or everyone's just gonna stop playing. Yeah. Think of any old Call of Duty. Like think of Black Ops 4. There was never, it was never the case that for six weeks straight, there was always a Nuketown or firing range or Nuketown plus firing range 24 seven playlist. That never happened. That was never common. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the maps in Black Ops 4 were far better, just in general, on average, than the maps in this shit game. So they didn't have to offer you on a platter, 
Oh, here's our best possible map 24-7. Please fucking come back and play our game one more time. Please, oh my god, if you guys quit, we're going to lose our $3 million per day in microtransactions. Please. They didn't have to do that because their map pool was strong enough to where people will play even if there isn't a Nuketown 24-7 playlist. But in this game, you will notice, you will notice, take note, there is always a shipment or shoot house or both or plus rust playlist, one of those four, always 24 seven. Now you might think that's, you might not have thought about it at all, but now that I've brought it to your attention, you might think that's fucking weird. Why would they do that? Cause it's never been the case that they do this in old call of duties. And I'm here to tell you it's because the maps in this game are unequivocally uh, unparalleled in how shit they are. So, nonetheless, all the new maps that got added post-launch, much better than the launch maps. So the state of the game with respect to maps is the worst COD ever. But that's not as bad as this game at launch. So Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's it disgusts me to have to say that, but it's true. So, our next section here is bugs. Bugs. The state of the game with respect to bugs. Now, my first note here. It is beyond my capacity to understand how they can reliably break something every single patch. No game, not only no Call of Duty, but no game ever has been buggier than this from a AAA dev team. Ever. There has never been a buggier game released by a AAA development team ever. I challenge you to find me a counterexample. I'm not kidding. There are probably buggier games that are developed by two 19 year olds who are fucking whatever, sophomores at Princeton. Fine. Sure, their game's buggier. They're also two 19 year olds at Princeton. But by a AAA dev team making $3 million a fucking day in microtransactions, has there ever been a buggier game ever from a AAA dev team? It disgusts no. me. Any thoughts on this, Tanner? I 100% agree. It's... I'm actually trying to think of games right now, and I'm thinking of all the big games. I mean, PUBG has been buggy at times, but... Not nah, a AAA not like dev this. team either. True. You know? um fortnite like, a, like fortnite never has been that bad yeah. yeah yeah imagine fortnite or 2k or battlefield um you can you could like you could you would have grounds to criticize game like the games i just mentioned those three you would have grounds to criticize all three of those games for various different reasons uh battlefield specifically we could we could pick on and say well, that game's terrible, and here's why. But the reasons you're going to list are bad choices made by the developers. So they took they, they went in the wrong direction. But what you can't say is Battlefield is a buggier game than MW 2019. It's not true. DICE may have made a bunch of terrible decisions, but they didn't consistently and reliably always release buggy shit shit bug filled shit uh like this game and it disgusts me it disgusts me with all the resources that are available here there is absolutely no excuse and when new patches are introduced they will fix one bug and they'll create two more minimum or they'll say they fixed a bug not fix that bug and then still create two brand new fucking bugs uh it is it's insane to me it is insane to me. They don't make progress toward fixing their bugs, but they actually get farther and farther away from having a bugless game. Because with every patch, like I said, they might fix one bug. If they do, they'll they'll create two more. And if they fix three bugs, they'll create six more. So the game now is actually buggier than it was at launch. Which is which is I, come on. Are you serious? Fucking Activision? And I know we talked about this one time. Um, like games like 10 years ago, 
they had to put out a game that was near perfect because patches back then were not really a thing. I mean, you would go through the entire game cycle and put out, you know, five patches, yep. six patches. It's like, I get it. The amount of content is so much lower. But still, like, they would put out a game that was basically perfect. And, like, when they would patch things, sometimes it would be just, like, adding a map pack in, things like that. Um, a lot of it would be just weapon balance. Like, okay, yeah. we, we nerfed the 1887s akimbos. That was a patch, for example. Yeah, like in Call of Duty 4, it started on uh, patch 1.0, and the final patch that they still play to this day is 1.7. And there were not patches in between that. It went 1.1, 1.2, up to 1.7. That's all they put out for the entire life cycle, on PC at least, and that game was alive and well played for four or five years. And not buggy. Not buggy at all. Was not buggy on day one. Never. Never this bad. And again, this goes back to Activision, I think, pushed the development teams to get their games out quickly. And it's, you know, it's really not Infinity Ward's fault because we do see it every year with every developer. I mean, not as bad as this. But uh... the games are being pushed too quickly and they need more time in development. Yeah, that's where, like... BO4 was not this buggy, not even close. It was probably 10% as buggy as this game. And that that is the most I mean, recent. it was a shit game, but... It was a terrible game, but this goes back to what I was talking about with, uh, with Battlefield. It's like, we disagree strongly with the a lot of the development choices that were made by Treyarch for BO4, namely Operators. Uh, but it wasn't that buggy. Uh, it wasn't nearly as buggy as this game. So I'm not sure I agree. In fact, I don't agree that that this is not Infinity Ward's fault. I think it is Infinity Ward's fault. And they had three years to develop this game. And Treyarch for Black Ops 4 also had three years to develop that game. So if Treyarch was able to create a game that was 90% less buggy than this game under the same conditions then why couldn't Infinity Ward? Now, there are probably, there are certainly variables at play here that I don't know. So think internal company kind of things, uh, whatever, that are going on uh, that, that could explain this. But when you combine how buggy this game is with how terrible the patch notes are, which we're going to get into, uh, uh, you you can't lay this at anyone else's feet other than uh, Infinity Wards, in my opinion. I don't think how buggy this game is and how terrible the patch notes are are Activision's fault. I, I just don't see it. I, I think it. I think Infinity Ward is really fucking genuinely terrible right now. I think they're a bad development team right now, which is awful to say because MW2, MW3, COD4 fucking amazing really good games but again dude those were 10 years ago it's the same company it's not the same dev team and that's what people have a a, a difficulty kind of parsing it's like it's it's kind of like saying uh you know we fucking bombed hiroshima and then nagasaki we is in the united states therefore the united states is evil it's like okay but every person involved in that decision is dead now. They're all dead. So it's like they're a part of the same company, government, but it's not the same people. So we're, we're different now. And the same thing is the case for Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward as a company is totally different than it was when MW2 and COD4 and MW3 came out. And I have to lay the, this problem at their feet. Maybe Activision is playing a larger role than I think. That is totally possible. But I think... There are just a lot of variables at play here that neither of us, nor anyone listening, uh, really knows because we're not on the inside. But nonetheless, uh, it disgusts me. And it's and it's not... It's unforgivable because we've seen every other AAA dev team not have this problem. So Infinity War doesn't have an excuse to have this problem. It's not like a, it's not like a 2020 game problem where every dev team is having trouble not having their game be shit and full of bugs. It's only this game. So uh, I, I will blame them full-throatedly here. 
Um, for example, since launch, Field Upgrade Pro, f action, since launch, Field Upgrade Pro has not worked as intended. I think the problem with Field Upgrade Pro is different now than it used to be, but it still doesn't work. And this problem with Field Upgrade Pro not working as intended has been the case not only since open beta, but since closed beta. So think about that. A core game mechanic, field upgrades, don't work since closed beta. And the game has been out for seven months now? Eight months? No, nine months now. The game's been out for nine months, and there is the same problem since closed beta? Three million dollars a day in microtransactions, by the way. How is this possible? How is it possible? I have something to say. Go ahead. In their defense, I think that bug for Field Upgrade Pro is only a PC bug. I don't think there's that same issue on console, and I don't know if there ever has been. It's been strictly PC. We've had that bug where it'll basically just disappear. You can't call one of them in, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Yes. Um, I think it's mostly PC only. So I think most of the players don't even realize it because the majority are on console. Okay. So we, we for sure have more bugs than console players do. That's for sure true. And crashes and shit like that. We also play on 200 frames, work. but yeah. Yeah, that's market forces at work, which, yeah. we've, which is a theme we've covered. Uh, you know, if... If only 20% of your player base is playing on PC, you're only going to devote 20% of your resources to making sure it works well. So that's that's a fa that's actually a fair point. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, which is there are forces at play that we're not exactly realizing. And one of the things BO4 didn't have to deal with that we do is crossplay. Um, so BO4 didn't have crossplay, so it was easier for them to to fix bugs in that game than it is in this game. So, uh, so fair point, Tanner. That's a good point. That's a good point. Still not okay. Still not allowed. But uh, it, it is an explanation. So um, another problem since closed beta, this here's where, here's where we diverge from that point. This is a problem for console and PC. Kill cams don't work. Uh, the kill cams, the I, I, excuse me, kill cams work. The final kill cam also works. So let me rephrase again. If the final kill cam is a play of the game cam, it doesn't work. Yes, there that's, we go. That's what I'm trying to say. And this has not worked again since closed beta. Uh, it hasn't worked. Uh, mm -hmm. Now... Now we can take one of two routes here. Stop doing it and just do final kill cam because you're incompetent. Or figure it the fuck out. Hey, figure it the you. fuck out. Thank you. Figure it the fuck out. Play of the game is so much better. A I don't care percent. what the final kill is. This isn't 2012. I don't care. I don't want to see some kid 360 no scoping off the side of a building. Don't fucking care. Show me the best play of the game. And how do we know that it's possible to have a reliable, consistent, and well-functioning play of the game at the end of every single match, Tanner. BO4. BO4. It exactly. works 99% of the time. Not always. 99% of the time, it would work perfectly. It would show the entire play. It wouldn't stop it early like in this game. I mean, there are plays of the game where they get one kill, and the rest of the play is them running, and then it cuts it off right before they get their other kills. It's... Horrendous. And it actually has been in there since closed beta. We're not exaggerating. It's been that fucked up since closed beta. Yep. Yep. And I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm not exaggerating on this point, nor was I exaggerating on the field upgrade pro point. Literally bugs since closed beta. Now, I'm picking out the most egregious examples to illustrate my point to you. But rest assured, listener, there are, there are dozens of other bugs. Maybe they haven't been around since closed beta, but they've been around far too long. Um, and they contribute to my feeling on this subject, which is that this game is way too buggy. 
Um, Promenade we talked about. Um, and then my last point here. Yuppie. Okay, go ahead. My last point here is that it is obvious to me one of two things. One of two things is the case. Categorically. Either, number one, there is no quality assurance team at Infinity Ward. That would explain a lot. That would explain, in fact, the patch notes and all of these bugs. These things would be explained if there did not exist a department called Quality Assurance at Infinity Ward. That's possibility number one. Do I think that's likely? No. Why do I think that's unlikely? $3 million per day in microtransactions. They can afford a fucking quality assurance team. It would increase their bottom line substantially if the game was not a bug-filled fucking disaster. Yet, here we are. Possibility number two. There is a quality assurance team at Infinity Ward. And they should be shot in the street like dogs in-game, of course. Because... If there's a quality assurance team at Infinity Ward and these are the bugs we're seeing and these are the patch notes we're getting, which we're going to get into, then they are the most incompetent department of any company on Earth now or ever in the past ever. Because if there is a quality assurance team in Infinity Ward, and we're still seeing the patch notes we're seeing, and we're still seeing all of these bugs, um, then you, you guys... Now, it's unlikely that anyone on the QA team or the head of the QA team in Infinity Ward is listening to this, but if you are, I want you to hear my message. No one has ever been worse at their job, at their career, um, than, than you are. You are the, the worst professionals of any industry, of any department, at any time, in any country, ever, to have ever existed. Full stop. Period. You're fucking terrible. Um, and you should be fired. Your department should be liquidated completely. Um, and the game actually might function better without a quality assurance team. Because if there wasn't one, maybe there would be more attention paid initially to putting out good patch notes that are comprehensive, knowing that you're not going to have some QA dickhead looking it over for you later. So you'll be a little more diligent um, and, you know, uh, meticulous. So if there's a QA team at Infinity Ward, which I suspect there is, you're the worst professionals of any industry ever. And I can't, I cannot overstate how bad you are at your job because the, there is no quality in this game. So if you're trying to assure quality, you're doing the worst conceivable job at that. So uh, Tanner, I'm going to go piss out of my huge white dick. But if you have any closing statements, now's the time. And then if you wanted to move on to the next uh, point, then you can feel free to do that afterward. So the floor Did you is already say the shot in the street? In game, of course. Yes, I did. In game, of course. Okay. Send them an official drop shot complaint. Yeah. Okay. What's next up on the agenda here, boys? Content flow. Okay, um, the amount of content introduced since launch has been pretty good. Maybe a bit slow, but not terrible. Um, the issue is they'll have these mid-season updates. Hey, so they'll call them the mid-season update, but they'll put it out two weeks before the season ends, and the season is eight weeks long. Or ten weeks. No, what is it usually? Eight weeks long. So, yeah. That's not really a mid-season update, so let's not call it that, yeah? Or, like this last patch they did, they called it... They said stuff was coming in the mid-season update. It was released at two or three weeks. So, hey, that's great. You know, the earlier the better. And it was the gun, um, the gun nerfs, the growl, all those weapon changes. So, let's just stop using the term mid-season update, because it's not ever at the middle of the season. 
Um, like when it comes to this season, the Ritech AMR, it was released basically two weeks into it. So what's going to come the rest of the season? Are we going to have more content? Are they going to add more content to it? Are we going to get some sort of significant war zone change? Like, why did they put that out so early suddenly and they haven't done that in any previous season? Like, what's the deal with that? I mean... Are we getting the intervention this season? <laughs> like, what's what's going on with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So let me jump in here. Um, yeah, it's like, just like Tanner said, the, the amount of content that has been released has been decent. Uh, probably a little slow, but not terrible. Um, but it's just the timetables are very weird to me. It's like... Like, okay, there was the mid-season update in Season 3. And then we didn't get season four for like, what, six weeks? Yeah. And then two weeks later after season four, they release another new gun. It's like, let's time these out better. Let's space these out better so that there is like a consistent, relatively stable trickling of content. And the same thing happened um, in season three. It's like, Season three comes out a week or two later, they release more shit and then nothing happens for another six weeks until season four space these things out better so that we're getting a constant flow of new shit instead of a fucking torrent of new shit followed by weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of absolutely nothing changing. Um, but overall, Tanner, I'm curious, how do you feel about the amount of like new content in general, maps, guns, etc., operators, if you count that, which you shouldn't. Um, how do you feel about the amount of raw content that we've gotten from launch to now? Do you think it is above and beyond, about correct, or below what you would expect in 2020? I think they've actually put out more content than I did expect. Uh, they've done it perfectly, too, with the way they've handled all the seasons. I'll give them big props on that. Um, none of the paywalls. And, you know, it's only, what is the battle pass? Nine ninety nine or something? It's it's cheap. And it's you can cheap. earn back. You can earn back in COD points to buy the next one. You get enough to do it. So they've handled all that well. They put out a good amount of content. Uh, I mean, a lot of the maps, they just remastered and brought them back. So I'm okay with it, though, if they're good maps and they don't ruin them. Uh, they put out a lot of weapons, you know, a lot of them have been awful, like some of them are just dog shit, you know, the crossbow, the striker, etc. The vector. So the vector fucking horrible. So, you know, they're putting out content. That's great. Like, seriously, that's great. Thank you. But I agreed. Maybe give me some better guns or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, like you're saying, the operators, quote unquote, whatever you want to call them, that's dumb. Yeah, it's not concrete. Yeah, yeah so, it's, yeah, um. But it's, it's been a good amount of content, I think. I've, it's more than I expected, I'll say that. Okay, I feel you, I feel you. I kind of feel the same way. It's like, like I was just saying, what, the amount of content I think is perfectly fine. I'm, I'm happy with it. I just wish they had spaced it out more strategically instead of having a new season and then a new gun two weeks later and then nothing for the next six to eight weeks dumb don't do that space it out better so that we are constantly engaged and excited rather than super excited at the big drop in a two-week span and then getting nothing again for so long that would also by the way be a much better business decision because you can constantly keep people coming back to your game rather than getting super excited to come back in this two week span and then getting bored three weeks in and then being gone for the following three weeks until the next new content drop comes. So I agree with you. I like the amount of content we've gotten. I don't like the timetables they've released them on. Um, and also, like you said, almost every gun that's been released or added post launch has been middling to terrible. There's exactly one exception, which is the growl. And that's what I want to see. I want to see guns released. What about the Bruin? The Bruin didn't shake up the meta at all. 
Hmm. That's the thing. The Bruins. Excellent point. Yeah. Okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I, I like that you brought that up because what Tanner's getting at is this. Well, Casey, the Bruin came out and the Bruins are really fucking good gun. My response is I agree, but a really good LMG doesn't shake up the meta. Whereas a really good assault rifle like the Growl does shake up the meta. So I wish that they would release new guns that are not overpowered. Like, I don't need your new gun to be the most OP thing in the game. In fact, I would say I don't want that. But it should be competitive or the best at something such that the meta gets shaken up. And the way to do that is to release your new gun. So, for example, the Vector would be... This is the perfect example. If they had released the Vector... And with the same patch that released the Vector, the Season 4 patch, they also nerfed the MP5 to where it was not as good as it is now, but not gutted either. So they nerfed it appropriately, and at the same time, released a Vector. And then the Vector is the best gun, the best SMG inside 12 meters, but it's still not the best SMG overall. That would be the perfect way for them to release new content. Because it would shake up the meta but it wouldn't be releasing a needlessly absurd gun that is fucking shits all over everything in every possible category. And then that would be the ideal way, uh, way to release new uh, content. Any thoughts on any of that, Tanner? No, you pretty much explained it perfectly. I mean, okay. they've, they, they've done a pretty good job for the most part still in terms of that. Yeah, for them, I agree, agree. For the most part, I think the content to be fair, has actually been overall 7 out of 10. Lots of new content. The guns they release aren't terrible, with the exception of, like, the crossbow. Um, and they don't, they're not so OP that it's like they must happen. Like the fucking Vendetta, for example. I think that is, that would be worse than a Vector because it's so overpowered. Um, but overall, uh... <laughs> Overall, I think, yeah, the content has been pretty good. Now, real quick, you guys might be hearing some background noise. That is because uh, the Vaping Viking keyboard is malfunctioning, and he's constantly tipping 1,250 bits over and over and over again. So let me try and fucking figure out what's going on here. Um, first of all, Jake Down, thank you for the gifted sub <laughs> to the Marshall 855. And Marshall, welcome to this small but vibrant and extremely humble community. Mulletproof, thank you for the 50 bits. Um, and then Viking, thank you for the gifted sub to Goated Oat. Welcome to this small but vibrant and extremely humble community. Marshall, thank you for the gifted sub to Drippy M8. <laughs> You love to see that. Mullet for the gifted sub. Let's fucking go. And then the vaping Viking. I actually am going to get out a calculator. So let me do this. Hold on. So <laughs> I actually have to. So let me do this. Okay. Okay. Um, or no, no, no. Fuck. Shit. Hold on. God damn it. I'm too inebriated. Viking, you son of a bitch. Okay. So he, the Vaping Viking is, has cheered 1,250 bits. Now that's fantastic, right? For sure. That's fantastic and I appreciate it. But that's not all that happened. Because he did it once, and then he did it again. And 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 again for a total of 10,000 biddies. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Holy shit. Viking, you fucking animal. Play it longer. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Viking, I'm honored, humbled, and distinctly privileged. 10,000 dummy, he says. Well, thank you, Viking. Read a calculator, yeah. I can't do quick maths like that. Dude, Viking, I appreciate it so much, dude. 
Jesus fucking Christ. This guy is an animal, a demon on the fucking bits. Uh, I'm honored, humbled, and of course privileged. As always, Viking, I appreciate you so much, man. You've been doing a lot. You've you've done the most for the Drop Shot of Call of Duty podcast. But you've also been quite the philanthropist uh, in other uh, streamers' uh, communities, which I very much love to see. Especially, by the way, especially during a global fucking pandemic where no one has a job. Number one, giving people a bunch of money during this time is even more helpful to those people than it otherwise would be. But number two, you're also probably, maybe, feeling the same financial stress uh, from this pandemic that everyone else is. Well, apparently not, huh? <laughs> but exactly, but apparently not, because you don't really give a fuck about that, because you're still just fucking doing this move, just tossing <laughs> bits around and United States dollars donations. So, um, so thank you for everything you've done for me, of course, and the Drop Shot of Call of Duty podcast, and for Tanner, um, and also for fucking, uh, you know, every other small streamer in the community, it seems like. Absolutely, dude. So make sure you follow The Vaping Viking on Twitter at The Vaping Viking on Twitch at The Vaping Viking and uh, keep your eyes peeled for that because mm -hmm. The Vaping Viking with his near infinite resources will be starting his own stream soon and you're gonna want to be following that. He's got some very fun and exciting ideas uh, in mind that he will be <clears throat> implementing and I have no doubt that he'll do it quite fucking well so uh, I appreciate you Viking so much man read that comment he wants you to read it that started off his hype train I would really appreciate it if you read goaded oats comment prior to me subbing him okay well look right below that I pasted it I'm gonna need 10,000 more bits to read it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let me find it. <laughs> a piece of shit. Wait, you pasted I it? I just, I Where? pasted it. There, there it is again. Okay. Drunk forehead retard. Okay, so Goated Out says, never catch this live, but I listen to you guys every day on my way to my shit job and on the way home from my shit job as I think of, <laughs> of new ways to kill myself in game, of course. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Well, go to note, I'm hon honored, humbled, and of course, fucking privileged that you can make it here. And by the way, I did miss some other things that happened. So, uh, uh, let me see. Mulletproof, thank you for the gifted <laughs> sub. Let's fucking go. Uh, what else do we have here? Jake down for the gifted <laughs> sub. Let's fucking go. Jesus Christ, things are getting insane today. Mulletproof, 1,000 bitties. Let's fucking go. Holy goddamn shit uh mulletproof jake brothers i want to thank you very much as well i'm honored humbled and of course privileged uh at the support um uh thank you very much man both of you boys i i really do appreciate it uh very kind of you to uh to to cheer to gift subs etc uh, Jake down you've been around forever and mullet proof you have as well So I appreciate you guys uh, continuing to hang out continuing to support it means uh, it means a fucking lot So thank you both boys and Viking of course. Thank you as well and go to dope with the five gifted stuff Let's fucking go. Holy shit, dude. Jesus Tyler stone killer fish serious chow joke man and apply Jesus Welcome to this small but vibrant an extremely humble you guys are gonna community. With the, with the gifted Jesus bits, Christ! We're never gonna finish this. Fight. <laughs> Here, let's fucking go. Revenge God or er, revenged? It's Shadow. Change it back, Shadow. Tim Dean, Squirtle Hurdle. That's a cool name. DJ Davy Jr. and Necta OG. Welcome to this small but vibrant and extremely humble community. And claiming Kira and go to dope. You love to see it. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs, respectively, boys and girls. I don't know if claiming Kira is a man or a woman. I suspect it's probably a man. I've seen the analytics. Uh, but uh, I appreciate the support from you guys. Um, 
very fucking much. I am, um, I'm honored, I'm humbled, and I am, of course, privileged. Very kind of you guys, uh, for real, for real. Thank you, everyone. This is actually uh, fucking insane right now. Quite the, quite the sidetrack, but I'm not mad about it. Hey, I'm not mad about it. Uh, thank you, guys, honestly. Thank you so much. Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's fucking settle down with the insane support. Um and let's uh let's move on with our state of the game address. I am very grateful, honored, humbled and privileged, but um we got to we got to move this thing along. So the next thing here is uh miscellaneous in our state of the game address. And this will be our last section. Um Kill cams, first of all. Are we doing play of the games or are we doing final kills? Pick one. And by the way, pick play of the game. It's not hard. Black Ops 4 did it seamlessly, 99% accurately, as Tanner said. Uh, there's no reason you guys can't fucking figure it out. Now, I know that it's basically impossible for... Um, to do play of the game for like ground war because you have to sift through a million plays because there are so many people in the lobby. I get that. Keep it only final kill and ground war and then every other playlist only play of the game. It can't be that hard. Figure it out. Anything to say on that, Tanner? Agreed. Okay. It's that simple. It, exactly. Yeah, it is that simple. Uh, so the next point is where I'm going to give it uh, MW 2019 Game of the Year Edition some credit. So whenever anyone tells me you're unfair to M-Dub, all you do is shit on it, wrong. I'm not. Here's some evidence to that effect. I, I genuinely try to be very fair when I'm judging this game, but there's just so much to criticize that it's hard to not sound like a hater. But that's because the game is objectively shit. It's objectively shit. But here's a piece of evidence to the contrary. Loot boxes slash microtransactions were handled exceptionally well, unlike Black Ops 4. Every gun, new gun, that can be unlocked can be done without buying a goddamn thing. And all microtransactions are only cosmetic. So if you remember Black Ops 4, whenever new guns were released, they were not in like a battle pass stream. They were just randomly unlocked by opening a loot box and getting lucky and unlocking the new gun. What this did was drive sales toward microtransactions where people would buy a ton of loot boxes hoping to unlock the new weapons. Everyone was pissed about this, rightfully so, because they spent full fucking retail price for the game, and then, Black, and then Treyarch would release insanely overpowered weapons and then lock them behind these loot boxes to where you would have to shell out a ton of money to try and get lucky in this slot machine to unlock these new very overpowered weapons. In defense of MW 2019, they have done this 0%. All the new weapons are totally free, no shenanigans, play the fucking game and you'll unlock it. And that, I really can't stress enough, two things. Number one, it's the moral thing to do. And it's the correct thing to do. Uh, but that's not why they did it. Number two, they did it because of community pressure. And then they shifted their microtransactions to all be cosmetic only. And beauty of capitalism, this paid off for them. They're making money hand over fist with microtransactions more than they've ever made. I spend more on microtransactions in this game than I did in BO4 because I don't fundamentally disagree with the microtransaction system in this game like I did with BO4. So they're not only doing a more equitable, fair system in this game, but they're also earning more money through their more fair and equitable system in this game, which I think is just a fucking massive win-win, and this trend will continue, and that is one of the very good precedents, one of the very few but very good precedence that was set with this game. We're not going to see the return of loot boxes with really good guns locked behind them. Tanner, any thoughts on this? Absolutely. Um, wasn't that gaming revolution that kind of got that? Well, 
he had leaked that they were working on loot boxes and then after all that leaked and people got pissed they came out and said supposedly they were never working on any mm -hmm. by the way they also said they were never working on a battle royale so keep that in mind um no we got Jesus we got leaks of actual loot boxes yeah so they were coded in and fucking ready to go yeah but so because of a leaker so before all of you shit all over people who leak things there was a leaker who did the thing that is not strictly legal and it resulted in so much community pressure that we now have a far more equitable and better game before you shit all over those people so yes tanner that is what happened but go on sorry um that's pretty much it i mean yeah it the loot boxes in vo4 they kind of got you to be honest you would drop money on them and try to get them but you also had a youtube channel you were trying to grow so you were trying to get those weapons and shit i did it occasionally um but i didn't end up with all the guns because i didn't want to keep just spending money and have like a one percent chance of getting the guns so but even though it's working obviously they're making way more money now so that's the way it should be in the future and that's fantastic. Exactly. And that's the way I think it will be in the future. Um, they're making so much money that they're not going to be tempted to go back to those loot boxes. And they're going to know from this year that if they try that shit again, especially if they stopped for a year and then went back to it, the outrage would be astronomical. And I just don't see it happening. And that's very good. So shout out to Activision for not being retarded. But bigger shout out to leakers such as at Modern Warzone, our good friend Young Douglas, and the gaming revolution um, for allowing the community to pile on and make a change for the better. That's a great thing. Now, uh, Mullet Proof with the 112 base, fucking go. And the Vaping Viking has decided he's done with bits. He's bored of them, right? He's bored of them. <laughs> so instead, he just donated. Um, let me see. It's a lot of digits. Um, <laughs> 140 and 26 cents United States dollars. And he says, what economic downturn? <laughs> well, Viking, holy fucking <laughs> shit. Let's fucking go. You love to see it. Viking, Jesus. Uh, Jesus Christ, you're fucking insane, first of all. You're goddamn insane. Um, I, I can't, I actually can't thank you enough, dude. Thank you so much, dude. It means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, I'll say it here first. I am now seriously considering going full-time. Uh, the Patreon's doing way better than I expected it to. Um, and because of very generous... Uh, viewers and listeners on Twitch. Um, a lot of fucking regulars that are always just throwing bits and gifting subs and subbing themselves um, because of you guys and of course in no small part because of uh, the fucking vaping demon, the vaping viking. Um, that dream might soon become a, uh, a reality. I told you, dude. Sooner than I thought, man, and it's fucking crazy. I mean, I'm not That's there. I'm not there yet, but it's looking more and more realistic every fucking week, which is actually insane. And it's, of course, thanks to um, all of you guys, it, like all of you. It's uh, it really means a, a fucking lot. No matter how much or how little you've donated or subbed or whatever, I, the the biggest thing by far, of course is just fucking listening, you know? That is the most helpful thing, just getting eyeballs here. Because the dream really is to get sponsors, and the only way to do that is to be able to show them analytics. Um, and the only way to do that is to have analytics, which means you guys fucking being here and enjoying the content and listening and telling your friends, which a lot of you have been doing, which I very much appreciate. But that is not to say that I don't love seeing things like this. Mulletproof has just gifted... 1,000 bits. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, Mulletproof, thank you so much. Viking, of course, thank you as well. Uh, I appreciate both of you boys. Mullet, you've been kind of going off today, dude. Uh, thank you, man. Mullet always does. He doesn't talk. He just drops bits all doesn't day. Doesn't say a fucking goddamn word. Just gives <laughs> fucking support.
they're just random amounts too. It'll be he'll drop one bit, he'll drop twelve, he'll drop a hundred, he'll yeah. drop a thousand. It's so funny, dude. It's, uh, yeah. Listen, I'm not mad about it. So um, no. mulletproof bunk, dude. Thank especially you, dude. if your internet gets fixed and you don't have to worry about moving out right now and spending that money. Quit that job, maybe. True. True. We'll see. We're thinking about it. We're thinking about it. I'll talk more about that at the end of the pod. But um. I want to be very careful to not try and fucking guilt people into like joining the Patreon or something. That's not, yeah. that is absolutely the opposite of what I want to do. I want it to be organic. But um, Viking says, if you had a catchy tune like that for all the biddies and gifties, it would get out of control. I actually really enjoy that sound. So I'm going to make sure to uh, tell Tanner to give it to me. So let me make a reminder. Get the dumb saxophone sound from Tanner. You know, it's funny Viking says that because you were telling me that when I added that to my soundboard. You're like, if you like that sound so much, why don't you just add that as your like sub or bit donation? So Right. Which I still think you should do, by the way. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. I like it, dude. I like it a lot. It's uh it's very It's pretty hype. It makes me want to dance, dude. It makes hype. a white makes a white boy want to dance. Makes this white boy want to dance. Yeah. It's very festive, which I enjoy. So, yeah, so for sure. Um, Jackie says, keep killing it. You guys have a feeling this is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, Jackie Moon, um, I fucking hope so, man. I hope so. Di I. No one is more <laughs> surprised <laughs> than Tanner and I about how fucking well this podcast has been going. Not just like money, but eyeballs. That's the most surprising thing to me. Yeah. Is I, I like when I streamed Black Ops 4, I had an average of probably 10 viewers at the max. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I'm doing a podcast about a video game, I think my average right now for the past 30 days is like 30 ish, uh, which is which for Twitch, it doesn't sound like a lot because everyone you know of who streams uh, is fucking ninja and Tifu and shit. Yeah. But those are the point zero 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 one percent. Um, so if you have a 30 viewer concurrent average, you're in the top, I think 5% of Twitch streamers. Jeez. M maybe higher than that. Um, so I'm not saying that's a brag. I'm, j I'm just saying that to illustrate, uh, that that is a statistic that is shocking to me. That it has been going this fucking well. Uh, yeah. So. And now is a good time to say, too, if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or something, thank you. We really appreciate it. Rate us five stars. We'll read it. But also, it's more fun live. We haven't said that in a long time. It's way more fun to be in Twitch chat and be here live. Yeah. I mean, I get it. There's a lot of people that want to listen to it the next day. But we also have a lot of people come in the chat you know, follow sub and be like, Hey, just stop by to say hi. I'm going to listen tomorrow. Like keep rocking it boys. Like shit like that, you know, a thousand percent. So it's sure. very fun to be here live. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And yeah, I'll add to that, that it is, um, it is becoming difficult as the viewership increases to like engage with everyone in chat while the podcast is going on, because I have to be cognizant of the vast majority of you, the 98% of you who are listening on apps after the fact rather than live. Um, and I don't want to just be reading chat, uh, you know, while these guys are at work, driving to work, driving home from work, trying to listen. I, I don't want to bore them. So if I feel, if you feel like I'm ignoring you, I'm sorry, but there's a reason for that. And it's because I want to be, because I'm aware that people are listening. Most people are listening who are not here live. And I will add to that, that if you are here live and you enjoy watching live, of course, thank you. It means a lot. If you can be here live, it is very, very, very helpful because it pushes us pushes us up in the Twitch algorithm. And then we get more eyeballs and then we get more followers and listeners and then the analytics go up everywhere, which is uh, insane. But um, also I would say that ev before every episode for 30 minutes, we start the stream before the episode, and that entire 30 minutes is devoted to just kicking it with you guys. I read every single message in those 30 minutes, talk to every single person, 
respond to every single person, answer every single question. And that is the reason we started doing that relatively recently was that we would have that really high chat engagement. Uh, and if you guys wanted to talk to us directly and have us respond, the time to be here is 6.30. 30 minutes before every podcast episode, that time is slotted out for you guys to where we can talk back and forth with you. So if you feel like you're being ignored, I'm sorry, get here earlier. And if you wanted to say something, I'll be able to respond and so will Tanner. So with that said, um, I do appreciate all the support and let's, uh, let's move on here. Um, I am sad that they took out 10's Dom. Uh, yes. But the player base for it was probably really small. So I understand why they did it. And I can't fault them for it. Because it's like, that was probably such a small percentage of the player base that if I said, that if I was in earnest saying they shouldn't have taken it out, I would just be being like a, a, a sniveling little irrational, um, irreconcilable kind of uh, cunt, which I'm not. So I'm mad that they took it out because it happens to be my favorite, but I also understand why they did it and I ultimately don't uh, fault them for it. Do you have any thoughts on that, Tanner? Yeah, I mean, we were seeing a lot of the same people in the lobby, so I understand it. We were absolutely furious when they took it out, and I, for some dumb reason, thought, oh, okay, it'll be back, like, next week or something. And you, <laughs> from the very beginning, you were like, no, it's gone. Like, they took it out, it's not coming back. And I was like, no, they'll bring it back next week. They didn't. So, keep that in mind. I'm still sad about that to this day. I am too. But but you're kind of with me. You understand why they did it? Is that what is that what I'm getting? Yes. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um Anal asks is 10v10 SBMM every single playlist in this game is SBMM, including Warzone. Um it's just the the more people that are in a playlist, the less strict skill-based matchmaking is. Not because they do that on purpose, but because you can be more narrow when there are fewer people. So of all the people queuing right now, you can find someone who has my exact KD to be on the enemy team if the playlist is one versus one. You can't do that. You can't be that narrow when it's 32 versus 32. So skill-based is less strict. But it's not because they choose for it to be that way, but just because it would be impossible to have strict skill-based matchmaking and ground war because there don't exist two populations of 32 that are extremely similar in KD. Whereas in gunfight, it is very easy for them to find two populations of two people who are all very similar in KD. So the bigger the playlist gets, the less skill-based matchmaking, or the less strict skill-based matchmaking is. But it's not because they choose for it to be that way, but it's just a fact of statistics and life. Uh, you, you can't be... Um, as strict. So they are always as strict as they possibly can be with skill-based matchmaking, but the bigger the team size, the less the less strict it is possible to be. Because you're not going to find, again, two populations of 32 people who are very similar KDs or score per minutes or whatever algorithm they use. Um, but if it's gunfight 2v2, they can be almost... You can almost find someone who is exactly the same as you to be on the enemy team that is queuing at that time. So, um, my next point here, this is again in the miscellaneous section for the, the state of the game. Um, I wish we would see more gunfight tournaments and I have an addendum to this. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, we have some addendums to this, but, uh. Ew. I wish we would see more gunfight tournaments. I love that mode, but it's something... I love the gunfight mode playlist, but it is something I'm never going to play unless there's something that I can get out of it, such as tournament prizes. So what would incentivize me to play gunfight more? Far more. Gunfight tournaments. Now, there have been a total of four in eight months which means one every two months, which is far too few. I think it would have been reasonable 
for them to have one gunfight tournament every two weeks. What do you think about that, Tanner? Do you think that's an unrealistic no. timetable? $3 million no, I mean, a day in microtransactions. Go ahead. It's in the game, so can't they do it whenever the fuck they want? They have the gunfight tournament in the game. They know how to do it. It's coded. It's in there. They do them every so often. Yep. So why can you not just have one, a new one, every two weeks? I mean, are they thinking it'll get stale or something? I mean, if it was one week on, one week off, one week on, I wouldn't get stale. Fuck that. I, don't, I, I wouldn't get bored of it. Just don't give me a VLK rogue with well, slug rounds hold every on. three rounds. Real quick, before we get there. Okay. Um, the reason they don't do it uh, every two weeks is because not that many people play the tournaments when they come out. That must be the case, in my opinion. Because, I guess so. Because if they were as popular as Warzone, they would be making them every three days. Uh, but anyways, despite the fact that we love gunfight tournaments, we didn't love the most recent one. Yeah. Can you tell us more about why we did not like the most recent gunfight tournament? Tanner? Well, if you guys want to see, go to twitch.tv slash Tanner Dropshot. Look at my past broadcast from July 8th, 2020. And you'll see why we didn't love it. Um, the loadouts were... Jesus Christ, absolutely fucking horrendous. I mean, I'm talking, so this is a gunfight tournament, right? We're using crossbows with explosive rounds. We're using crossbows with thermite rounds. We're using VLK rogues with, with slug, slug rounds. rounds. Yes. We're using, an was it an R9 with a slug? What was the other shotgun we had with a slug round? Origin. Origin slug rounds. We were using um, Renetti Akimbo. Burst. Which is nerfed, Burst. by the way, so it has no fucking range. Um, I mean, EBR with a sniper scope on it. I mean, and they could not. The well, last one that was terrible, Magnum with a 6x scope on it. Magnum with a 6x. I'm not exaggerating. They could not have made those weapon loadouts any worse. I would have done pistol, no attachment only, RPGs the entire time. Easily. I would have rather had that. Yep, all of those. I mean, just horrible. So it was not fun. And then on top of that, um, the gunfight tournament for some reason is still in beta. <laughs> Don't know why. The, it's, it the actually game, says hey, beta. Hey, Infinity War, your game is dead in three months. Take your gunfight tournament out of fucking beta. It should not be in beta. A thousand so we, I lagged. No, no, no. We both did. Mm -hmm. The connection is horrible. We both lagged out and got kicked to the lobby, disconnected. Yep. I, it happened to me probably three times and you it happened twice. So we whoever agreed. Was okay. In every single attempt we made, whoever was not party leader got kicked from the group and then was forced to join a round. And it was a sketchy situation because it didn't always work. Uh, so even though the loadouts were terrible, if that wasn't bad enough, it would also just randomly kick your teammate every single yeah. tournament. So it was far and away the worst gunfight tournament they've had. anti -fun. Um Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I also died to a C4 that on my screen landed. Oh, my God. You should have highlighted feet. that. So somebody did clip it. Um, they didn't clip the actual kill cam. They just clipped when I died. But you can still see they threw it and it landed on your body and you took zero damage. And I was, hey, literally 12 feet away on the yep. other side of a rock. Yep. And the C4 killed me. Yep. Not an exaggeration. So full release. The whole game's still in beta, actually. So it's or a shit game. Fuck gunfights. Yeah. Well, yeah. So just hit shots, boys. K slush. So slush easy, also known as shitter, which yeah, is an, shitter, app, right, which is an apt name right now, uh, says yeah. just hit your shots, boys. Smile. K. Well, kill yourself in game. In game, of course. And also, um, the thing is with gunfight tournaments, it's supposed to be a test of skill, and to test my skill. To test anyone's skill, you have to give them weapons that they've used before. Now, 
I've never used. I've almost never used a fucking crossbow with a thermite tip before. Maybe, maybe five times ever. And I play this game a lot. <laughs> yeah, loser. I, okay. <laughs> I've, I've never used an Origin 25 semi-automatic, very close range shotgun with slug rounds ever. Liter I can say this, literally never used it once. And no one else has either. VLK Rogue with slug rounds, never used it once. A Magnum with a 6X scope, never used it once. Uh, Akimbo Burst Renetti's post nerf, never used it once. So why the fuck are these in the tournaments that are ostensibly supposed to test gun skill when you're giving us objectively terrible loadouts that are so bad that no one playing on either team has any experience with them. Anti-fun. So, again, to get back to the state of the game, I love the gunfight tournaments in general. The three tournaments preceding uh, this one were great, very fun, had a lot of good times, and they're insanely hype. I love we them. We won all of them first try. And we won all of them first try, of course. Um, but this one, they shit the bed with the loadouts. But nonetheless, irrespective of that, they need to release more gunfight. They, I shouldn't say need, because it doesn't matter now, because the game is dead. But they should have been releasing far more frequently uh, gunfight tournaments. Um, this point, this next point, I'm very interested to hear Tanner's thoughts. Okay. And here's what I have to say. I've come full circle on Ground War. I used to think it was dumb and shit and I hated it because it was like an odd battlefield port into a game like Call of Duty that would never play well for a large scale battle mode um, because it wasn't designed for that. So I hated it. And then I started to actually really like it. And again, I've come full circle <laughs> I now fucking hate it again, and I don't play Ground War anymore. Now, there is one... There are two factors here. But number one is, this is in no small part due to the terrible decision. And I said this was a terrible decision on this fucking podcast as soon as the change was made. Due to the terrible decision by Infinity Ward to move Kill Chain from a red perk to a blue perk. Every single game of Ground War now is 32 people on one, on one team running Kill Chain against 32 other people on the other team running Kill Chain. So more than half of every Ground War match is a fucking DEFCON blowout. More, probably more than 65% of matches end in a DEFCON. Mm. End in a DEFCON. Okay. Don't agree. Okay, we're going to get your thoughts, but let me finish. They end in a DEFCON because as soon as one team has one person who gets their first cruise missile, the game's over. Because they cruise missile nine people, and then they get their VTOL and their white phosphorus, and then they fuck everyone's ass because they have kill chain, because it's so, it's so costless to run kill chain now because it's blue instead of red, which should have never happened. And then as soon as that happens, it makes it exorbitantly easier for another one of their 31 teammates to abuse Kill Chain by getting to their five kills and then getting their cruise missile into their VTOL, into their White Foss. So then as soon as the VTOL and White Foss that are already in the air are gone, this second teammate who got it off the back of the first guy calls in his... And then this repeats until a DEFCON victory happens. And therefore, every ground war game ends in a DEFCON. And if it doesn't, every ground war game is replete with not only tanks, which ruin ground war, which we've talked about, but also everyone has kill streaks always because kill chain is way too easy to run now. Now, Tanner seems to have disagreed with me on a few points here. So the floor is yours. Yours, uh, yours. Okay, the fact that you said Ground War ends in DEFCON, what'd you say, 65% of the time? At least. 
you're a dumb shit stupid bitch for that. Okay. Um, it only ends that way on Promenade. You play any other map on Ground War, okay. it ends in a DEFCON 15% of the time, 10% wow. of the time. Wow, really? So, okay. keep that in mind, you dumb I'll, bitch. I'll keep that in mind. I want to I see also the don't think that many... Okay. I also don't think that many players run Kill Chain. A lot of the people that play Ground War are so bad, they know they can't even get a UAV. So they're not running Kill Chain. Um, they're running personal radars or shield turrets, so keep that in mind. But I will agree, Ground War isn't as fun as when it originally came out. And I think it's because we have just had it with the tank. If Ground War was infantry only from the start, I think that would be our favorite game mode right now. And also, Warzone is a big factor in that. If Warzone didn't come out, we would still be playing Ground War. We'd be used to it. But now that we've had a taste of Warzone, we don't want to go back to Ground War. I still think it's fun. You just must be dog shit at the game. I have fun. Would I rather Ground War be Anaya? Shit on. <laughs> would I rather Ground War be Anaya 24-7? We all Absolutely. Would, and why is Absolutely. Anaya the best Ground War map in the game, Tanner? Because there's no goddamn tanks. Oh shit, sorry, wrong button. I meant to press that. Yeah, correct, correct. Go on. Um, but yeah, so I have fun in Ground War. I mean, every life you go on at least a 10 kill streak if you're not awful, so. It's fun, but it has gotten a little old, and it's just because I've been killed by tanks 1,049 times now, and I've just had it, so. Okay, so that's interesting. Let me ask you this, then. Do you think... Kill Chain getting moved from red to blue made Ground War significantly worse? A little worse? Or no difference? Or a better? little worse. A little worse. A little worse, yeah. Interesting. I thought there were a lot of streaks already. I like it. It helped me a lot. I can run Ghost and Kill Chain now, and I just get a White Foss every time. Yeah, of course. So, that's the problem. Promenade too... gamers in the chat. It's... White low cap. It's too easy. So, well, okay. I'm well just, maybe I'm just too good. At getting a five kill streak and then abusing yeah. the rest of the game. And then, yeah, and then going on a 30 yeah, so kill streak, but still only retarded, having five gun kills. If you're not retarded and you're playing Ground War, you should be using Kill Chain. Unless you're trying to go for nukes, then you should run Specialist, and that's great. Um, so, anyways, okay, whatever. Agree to disagree there. I couldn't agree, disagree more strongly, uh, but you guys heard my thoughts on that. So, last thing here is um, these patch notes. LMAO is the note. So, let me. Let me just class if you if I can direct your attention to the to the screen here real quick. Just give me one second. Okay, great. So I want you to look at the highlighted section. This is all I've written down. These patch notes in all caps LMAO. Now, why did I write that? Well, we've talked about this ad fucking nauseum on the Drop Shot of Call of Duty podcast. Um these patch notes are the worst patch notes that have ever ever existed. Um I've said this before and I'll say it again. There has not been a single patch that had patch notes that were both accurate and accounted for everything that actually changed in the patch. So they will either they will either release a patch that changes things that they don't tell you or and or they will release a patch where the notes say they changed something that they actually didn't. And this is... It's... I'm speechless. I can't believe that a, that a AAA development team can be this bad at doing patch notes. Which is the simplest fucking thing, by the way. You already changed the game... How can you not fucking put it into writing such that we know what the fuck is going on? And this is great for exclusive Ace, for example, because it it employs him. I Honestly, you have to go to exclusive Ace's YouTube channel to get an accurate assessment of what just changed with patch X point Y Z. You have to, because never... Never, never, never. There has never been a set of patch notes that have been correct. They've either failed to mention something that they've added or changed, or they've changed something or added something that didn't get mentioned. Or 
uh, they'll say they changed something and then didn't actually change the thing. So the patch notes, I can't stress this more than I will now uh, or than I'm, than I'm trying to now. The worst, the worst, again, this goes back to the quality assurance team that should be shot in the street like dogs in game, of course. <laughs> um, game. They, they're the worst patch notes by the worst development team department that have ever existed and it disgusts me and they should be ashamed of themselves and they should be shot in the street like dogs in the game of course any thoughts <laughs> on this tanner no you covered it pretty well okay. <laughs> all right so uh all right so we're gonna wrap it up here now um in conclusion for this state of the game address um my question to you, Tanner. Now, normally, by the way, I've said this about the state of the game. We're going to be doing this three times a year. So the game launches. Three months later, we're going to do a state of the game. Six, nine, and then a year in review. So it's three state of the games per year. Normally, this section will be, is the game better or worse since the last state of the game address? In this case, since it's our first one, the question's a little different than it will be in the future. But here it is. Is the game better or worse since the last state of the game address? In this case, is the game better or worse since launch? Overall, Tanner. Overall, it's definitely better. Okay, tell me more. Um, I mean, it's a buggy mess, but we have way more content. We're not playing a Zero Cave and we're not playing Piccadilly all the time. Uh, matter of fact, if you're still playing that map, either of those two maps in July, of 2020 you are playing the wrong game mode or something because you're a dumb shit for dealing with those unsubscribe um, from this podcast if you're still playing yeah. piccadilly if you enjoy azir or piccadilly even in the slightest even if you say oh it's a decent map unsubscribe kill yourself in game so mm -hmm. <laughs> um they put out a lot of content uh they put out a lot of weapons they've tried to switch up the meta recently I mean, regardless, three months, I mean, no, not even three months, three weeks after this game came out, I don't think you wanted to play it anymore. You were already done with it. So needless to say, the game's better now. And I think the biggest factor is that Warzone saved it. And I know a percent. lot of people say, said it. We shit on Warzone when it first came out. We made awful predictions, especially me. Just... We absolutely yeah just horrible predictions we, both did, yeah. we were completely wrong but that's okay warzone has been pretty fun um they have destroyed multiplayer because of warzone so that saved that we've been having a lot of fun and that's just that's call of duty now is it's warzone you don't when people talk about Call of Duty, oh, do you want to hop on COD? Hey, they're not playing multiplayer. They're playing Warzone. Yeah. So that's what we're at. It's save the game. The game would not have very many players right now if it weren't out. A thousand percent. There would be no big streamers playing it anymore. The biggest streamer on Twitch would be twitch.tv slash Tanner Dropshot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so Warzone uh, was their saving grace for sure. Yeah. That's how so I feel. Okay, so yeah, uh, so the question again, is this better, is the game better or worse since launch? Uh, overall, the state of the game is much better than it was at launch. For all the reasons Tanner enumerated and more. Even multiplayer is better because there are more maps now, and the maps post-launch were all better than the maps that came out at launch. Um, and also, like Tanner said, there's more content now, so there's more weapons to fuck around with. Um... Uh, again, more maps. Uh, that makes the game better, for sure. Um, and unlike many Call of Duties, they didn't introduce a bunch of insanely overpowered stuff, which is actually... And I, you know, again, to give credit where credit is due, I give a lot of credit to MW 2019. They haven't released something post-launch that's very OP. Let me take you guys back in time to a game that did do exactly this, and it made the game much worse than it was at launch. Black Ops 4. Such as, this is, here are three examples. There are fucking many more I could get into. Number one, The Rampage. 
Any fucking rampagers in the chat? If you are, kill yourself in game and unsubscribe from this podcast. Dude, we hated the rampage. We oh sure my God. as fuck did. What was the rampage again, Tanner? Can you remind us what the rampage was? It was a fully automatic shotgun. You didn't even have to click. Yep. Fully automatic shotgun, way too much oh, range, way too God. overpowered, disgusting, fucking yeah. terrible. So to MW 2019's credit, they haven't given us a rampage. Great. Another example, the Vendetta. Now they patched the Vendetta, but when it first came out, it was a one-shot headshot and it was semi-automatic and it had a fire rate like a fucking foul. So it was insanely overpowered. And a one-shot headshot was even more overpowered in BO4 than in, than in this game because the total health pool was 150 instead of 100. So the time to kill was way slower, but a Vendetta was semi-automatic and still had a zero millisecond time to kill if you got a headshot. Insanely overpowered. And uh, example number three, but certainly, again, not the last of my examples, Reaper Scythe. The most disgusting Jeez. fucking uh, ult in all of Black Ops 4 pre-nerf was Reaper Scythe because you could fucking rape everyone easily in very little time with no skill, very little aim required, and also virtually unlimited ammo. Uh, and if you, for example, use Reaper with equipment charge, you would just rape everyone and you didn't have to be good to do it. So to MW 2019's credit, they have not released anything insanely overpowered like BO4 did post-launch. Uh, so the state of the game was not deteriorated by any of those things in the same way that BO4 state of the game was deteriorated when they did release all of this insanely overpowered things post-launch. So good on MW 2019. Dude, remember the scythe? I had zero kill chains before. <laughs> Before Scythe came out, and then you had I had one day. <laughs> I had four kill chains within like the first week. It was so dumb. <laughs> it was... Like, why would it even count towards kill chain? Even, like, why did specialists count towards that stuff? Oh, anyway, that, that doesn't so matter. Bad. But, anyways, no, yeah. that's such a good point though. It was yeah, like it just shows chain... you how overpowered the stuff exactly. they put out was. Exactly, kill chain was so hard to get pre Scythe. <laughs> And then post scythe, everyone had it, cause you just rape everyone. No skill, no skill, no thought. Just fucking right click, hold down your trigger. Fucking everyone's dead. Especially on Nuketown, if you could get into their spawn in Nuketown, you had a kill chain every time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Viking, the the uh, the the drop shot patriarch says quick question what time is the stream jumping over to tds i like that acronym have you yeah, ever been yeah. acronymed before i haven't i've been acro now thanks i like the that viking, dude. viking so tds stands for tanner drop shot that is the only way i'll be referring to you from now on tds so um <laughs> okay uh trying to time something special correctly if you're wondering that's a contraction add an e read a book uh, just wait till Tanner goes live and gets settled in to find out. Uh, soon. We're almost done, so... We're also, though, doing a gameplay minutes. breakdown. Yes, we are. At the start of my stream, so that'll, that'll take probably 30 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, but we're almost done, Viking. Um, also, real quick while we're here, um... Eve Dog with the 300 bitties. <laughs> Bulletproof with the 100 bitties. Let's fucking go! And, uh, Slush Easy also known as Shitter, with the fucking <laughs> subby boy. Three months, great pod, y'all. Imagine living 10 or 15 minutes from us and not giving a fuck. At slush underscore easy. Yeah, well, slush can not kill caring. himself in game. Um, Piece of shit. But Eve Dog, Mulletproof, and slush easy. I appreciate it. I'm honored, humbled, and of course, privileged. So uh, let's see here. So yeah, okay. So TDS and I agree on that. Um, Damn. The, the new maps also are not worse than the originals, so that's good. I think we've thoroughly covered that. Um, and to be fair, as many bugs as, as there are that were present in closed beta, they did fix some bugs, such as very dark spots on Azir Cave, 
they made them less dark. They made them better. Now, did they fix these dark spots on Azir Cave? Absolutely fucking not. But they made them better, so that's good, which means the state of the game for Azir Cave in those dark spots is better now than it was at launch. Is it good enough? No, but it's better, so credit kind of where it's due. Um, your vision no longer becomes totally black and white when you're low health, which was the case when this game launched. That was a very good change. So again, the state of the game is better with respect to that than it was at launch. Um, and these were all good. Were there any other issues at the at launch that, that got fixed that you can think of, Tanner, uh, TDS? Oh, the black and white one was a great one. Yeah, that, that was so annoying and stupid. I'm glad they listened to, um, to the people with that. Um, did you mention the minimap stuff in here? I didn't, but uh, take it away. Um, I mean, they fixed the minimap. Uh, well, they didn't fix it. Red I dots still don't totally show up when you shoot. I totally forgot about this. But, so what was it? So they changed from th some things between the beta and the launch of the game. So in beta, you didn't even have a radar, right? And you had to call in a UAV to even see your radar. That includes teammates. Your minimap, yes. Yes. So when the game launched, it showed... What did it show again? It showed the mini map no. and did it not even show your teammates? No. no. Did it did it still launch with nothing? When the game launched, your HUD by default was the compass with no mini map whatsoever. There was no mini map unless there was a UAV for your team or a personal radar for yourself. And then there was so much pressure that they added a persistent minimap that only showed teammates. But okay. when the game launched, there was no minimap at all. It was only the compass. Yeah, so that was fucking horrible. Um, but yeah, other than that, Azir was super dark. They brightened that up. That's all I can think of right now, the big things. Yeah, okay, agreed. So, yeah, but Tanner, you, that's a great point that I can't believe I forgot. Because that was my hobby horse when this game launched. Um, yeah, when the game launched, um, or excuse me, it it didn't launch this way, to be fair. But in beta, like I just said, uh, the minimap didn't show up at all unless you had a personal radar or a UAV on your team. So you didn't even see teammate positions. There was only the compass. This was very poorly received. So they changed that. So again, better. They made a better change. The minimap still does not function as it should but it is at least uh, a, an improvement on what it was like in beta, what their vision was. Their vision was terrible. Um, and then, of course, they launched Warzone. This definitely improved my experience of the game because I would, I do, I would be hard-pressed to think of a scenario where I'm still playing this game without Warzone at all because there's no prestige system. Uh, there is skill-based oh, yeah. matchmaking. There's no challenges that are worth going for. Uh, so if it weren't for Warzone, it would be hard for me to play this game twice a week even. Um, so the fact that there was no Warzone at launch and there is Warzone now, which by and large is a pretty good BR. My only gripe with Warzone is the terrible map. Um, but besides that, Warzone's done pretty well. And the custom loadout thing has actually kind of grown on me and I've kind of 180'd on my uh opinion on that yeah you know somewhat yeah so uh so now so at launch there was no war zone now there is therefore state of the game in my view better for that reason um agreed then then launch so you said somewhat about the custom loadouts tell us more <sighs> well i don't know we never got to experiment well, okay, here's the thing. The loadouts they drop on the ground now, the floor loot is horrendous. So if that was just better in general, I don't know if we'd really need the custom loadouts. But you're right, it has grown on me. Um, I am glad they raised the price to buy it to 10000 It was 6000 and that was horrible. So I'm glad they changed that. Honestly, it should still be higher. I mean, if you get a contract right away and loot the right area, you can still have your loadout drop within... Three minutes, would you say? Three minutes? Four minutes? Uh, depends on your team size. 
Yeah. If you're doing so, fours, yeah, like two minutes, you can have enough. For sure. Yes, I I still think it needs to be like twelve or fourteen thousand. But I think uh, it needs to be adjusted for the playlist. For four people, it should be like yeah, twelve, fifteen thousand. For three people, maybe eight or nine. Two people, yeah. six thousand. One person, maybe six thousand as well. I mean, plus as um, as the guest co-host of the Drop Shot Low Cap said, they added the five thousand uh, dollar bundles in that you can find on the floor, so that makes it even quicker. And those True. aren't that rare, really. I mean, I feel like True. I find one every round, so that adds to getting your loadout even quicker. True. True. Um, okay. Fair. Fair. Interesting. Yeah, I I'm kind of with you there. I don't disagree very strongly about any of that um so with all of this said this is my last point for the state of the game address for summer 2020 uh modern warfare 2019 game of the year edition and this will be our last state of the game address for this game because we're only going to be doing after this a year in review series um uh for this shit game um this is still one of the worst Call of Duties of all time, fucking easily. Uh, and let me give you a list of Call of Duties I played. Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, COD 4 Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty World War 2, Call of Duty World at War, and Modern Warfare 2019 Game of the Year Edition. That's 10 Call of Duties I've played. I haven't played them all. I haven't played Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare. There's some other ones in the middle that I haven't played. I may have played more than those 10 that I can't think of right now. Of all 10 of those games, this is the worst Call of Duty of all 10 of them. Um, by the way, easily. Now, if you say, okay, Casey, well, if you're telling me you liked Black Ops 1 better than MW 2019, and I forced you for the rest of your life to play only Black Ops 1 multiplayer or MW 2019 multiplayer, which would you pick? I would say MW 2019 multiplayer because it's better. So, then, so now you're saying, so now you have a puzzled look on your face and you're saying, hey, Casey, are you dumb? And my aunt, right, which is where Tanner's at. Great. So let me explain. <laughs> no, I'm not dumb because I judge each game contemporaneously. So when Black Ops 1 came out, when it was compared to every other video game in existence at that time, Black Ops 1 is insanely good. When, uh, whatever, Black Ops 4 came out, uh, when it came out, compared to every other game on the market, when it came out, it was very good. Um, when MW 2019 comes out in 2019, uh, compared to every other game on the market, it is... Compared to its contemporaries at the time of release, it is the 10th out of 10th worst Call of Duty of all of the Call of Duties I've listed. It's not, it's actually not a good game. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's my favorite game on, on the market right now. And I've, I've, I've given you guys the Star Wars analogy. I'm not going to rehash it. It's a great game. By Call of Duty standards, fucking awful. Which is why I'm telling you it is the worst of the 10 Call of Duties I've ever played. Easily, easily, easily. Skill-based matchmaking is reason number one. Terrible maps, reason number two. Mini map not working as intended, reason number three. Fucking atrocious sprint out time, reason number four, uh, and so on. So, contemporaneously, again, when we judge a game by its peers at the time of release, MW 2019, Worst game of ever, worst Call of Duty I've ever played of all 10 Call of Duties I've ever played. So the state of the game for me at this time, summer 2020, better than MW 2019 at launch, terrible Call of Duty game by Call of Duty standards. Fucking terrible. And again, you guys might think I'm a negative Nancy because I started this podcast for MW 2019. So every podcast episode you've listened to is me just shitting on the game. But I want to be clear. If I had started this podcast when BO4 launched, you would not see that side of me. 
you would see a side of me that is just heaping praise on the game for things it did well. And I do heap praise <laughs> when BO4 launched. That's different than BO4 okay. six months in. That's, okay. I was very I was very careful to say that because I see where you're coming from, Tanner. Um so uh so you guys might again you might think I'm just some fucking negative Nancy who's just a hater on Call of Duty in general because that's all you've seen me do. But the reason I'm doing that is not because that is a property of Casey. It's a property of this shit game that I have the displeasure of doing a podcast on. It is not a property of me. I would love to be just fucking heaping praise on this game, but I can't. And I try very hard to be fair when it warrants being fair. Such as when I talk about the removal of loot boxes. Fantastic. When I talk about weapon balance in this game. Really fucking good. Of all the 10 Call of Duty games I've played, this is probably the best game ever for weapon balance. So I am I really am fair. I really try hard to be fair. I'm not just some fucking hater. But even though this game has the best weapon balance of all 10 games, that's not the whole picture. And in light of all of the glaring flaws with this game, the fact that the weapon balance is really good doesn't do enough for me. And the game is still the worst of the 10 Call of Duties I've ever played when judged at contemporaneous standards. So, uh, Tanner, your your thoughts. Okay. Well, I'm not going to talk for 30 minutes because we could have an entire episode about this, but I don't think it's one of the worst CODs of all time. I still think it's a fun game. Like, I don't really know how to put it all into words. I mean, I know we trash on it a lot. Like you're saying, the maps aren't great. The visibility is fucking awful. Oh, the visibility. There's, yeah, I forgot to mention. There's that. there's no prestige, um, et cetera, et cetera. But still, like when it comes down to it, I have fun playing with, like playing this game. Like granted, at this point, I'm basically only playing two nights a week when I stream. If I was playing five or six days a week, I would probably feel different about it. But I still get on and have fun almost the entire session, except for that gunfight tournament. That was dog shit. <laughs> um, so do I, to be fair. Again, I wouldn't play the game at all if I didn't really fucking enjoy it. So I really enjoy the game. It's just also, I, I enjoy the game more than any other game. And it's also the worst of the 10 Call of Duty games I've ever played. Yeah, I Those mean, I would still contradictions. That's what I want to say. I would still prefer a quicker paced game. Like when you go back, when we were playing Black Ops 4 for 10 minutes the other day. I was <laughs> or like, when we're oh my playing God. Cranked. Oh my God. Or when we're playing Cranked in M-Dub. That's what the movement speed should be. I love the quick movement. It makes the skill gap way higher. Um, it adds something else to the game instead of just aiming and having shit visibility and trying to find name tags. You know, you're actually sliding around and you're using good movement and I enjoy that. So I do wish the game was quicker, but I mean, overall, I don't know what to say. It's the game is a lot better than at launch, though, a lot better. I mean, like one month in, I was very worried that we were going to have to play that game for a year. I was like, oh, shit, dude, like this is this is not great because you were you know, you were saying BO4 at launch was really good, but I don't think. You remember the last two or three months of BO4, every time we played, you were like, I fucking hate this game. I can't wait for Modern Warfare. Like, True. I don't even want to play. I don't think, True. I think you kept playing it, but I think for about, from you when stopped. the beta came out, yeah, from when the beta, came, beta out, came out, before beta yeah, came out, I, I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, no, I'm done with Black Ops, but I was playing it way more at the time than I played this game. Like every night yes. I was playing for a few hours, right. so... You know, it's probably just more I was more burnt out on it and maybe like that if I played this. But again, Warzone was the saving grace of this game. It adds in something different. It doesn't really feel like Call of Duty. It feels like a different game and it's still kind of fresh and new. Even true. though it's a BR, there's a lot of different aspects of it. So a thousand percent true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Warzone was a saving grace. And so let's say we're rating it zero to ten. What would you give this game in its current state? Damn, you're putting me on the spot. It depends on... Okay. It depends what on... What would you rank it at launch? What would you rank it now out of 10? Okay, I'll do that. But I have to ask, 
zero out of ten is the scale video games that exist right now or is the scale call of duty games that exist right now the scale is how fun this game is to you and how good you expected the game to be basically did it meet your expectations okay okay did it meet my expectations no did it my did it meet on how on how well it met my expectations, three out of ten. The gunplay is better than I expected it to be, which is a big deal, by the way. The weapon balance is way better than I expected expected it to be, which is also, again, a big deal, by the way. There's no operators, which is fantastic, which is a big deal, by the way, because you know, Tanner knows, most of you don't. But Tanner knows how much I fucking despise operators. I fucking hate them. And I'm I didn't so, have a huge problem with them, but you hated them. They disgust me. I fucking hate them. Um, so the fact that those aren't in the game, again, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But almost everything else, dog shit. Dog shit. So yeah, 3 out of 10 as far as meeting my expectations. Um, as far as how much I enjoyed the game, because of Warzone, probably... 7.5 out of 10. Were it not for Warzone, 5 out of 10. Okay. How about you? That's, I mean, my... You're pretty much right about the expectations. I expected... I mean, the gunsmith and everything is fantastic, but we also expected a prestige system. We expected a normal mini-map. Exa very so, good point. Very so in terms of point. what we were expecting, we were expecting good maps. Um, <laughs> yes, you're you're Infinity probably Wars. right about the 3, 4 out of 10. But in terms of like how much fun I'm having now, yeah, it's like an 8. I eight? mean, okay. Okay. It, it would be... It would probably go up an entire point if the mini map worked as intended, and another point if I could see people. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. You know. Yes. Okay. So let me ask you this: If Warzone did not exist, what would your rating be out of ten? It would still be probably a seven or a seven and a half. Really? Because also mul multiplayer would be a lot better if Warzone didn't exist. That's that is such a good counterfactual. That is such a good point. Because they're, all the development resources that were going into Warzone would instead be going into multiplayer, making that experience much better and having much more content. That is yeah. a very good point, which I uh, I concede completely. Because I was about to fucking roast you, but you're right. Because if there wasn't Warzone, then multiplayer would be getting a lot more attention, and thus it would be a lot better. So, fair. Yep. Great point. Great point. Uh, any other closing thoughts from Tanner Dropshot? Um, TDS, excuse me. No, I think we should just hit the uh, the Damascus boys and then move on. Jake's been waiting. Okay. Um, well, no, we're not doing that. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Well, God damn you. I need your input on this. You still have your headphones on wireless, by I the way. All right, well, piss faster. Uh, okay, so first thing I wanted to hit So that is the end of our state of the game address. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that Once again, that will be a staple of the drop shot of call of duty podcast for call of duties going forward So again, there will not be another state of the game address for this shit game Instead, there's going to be a year in review series and what that is going to be is when this game is near the end of its life cycle probably about a month before COD 2020 releases, we're going to take time off work and we're going to do three podcasts in a row, each of which will be roughly three to four hours. And we're going to get too drunk for each of these three. And they're going to be consecutive days. And that's why we're taking work off. And we're going to do three sections, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, for example, we'll take Thursday and Friday and Saturday off work. And uh, in whatever, October 20th, about a month before uh, COD 2020 comes out. So, on that Thursday, we're going to do a three to four hour podcast where we drink too much. And we're going to say, 
only the good things about this shit game. Uh, so maybe that podcast won't be four hours. Maybe it'll be 20 minutes. And then the next day, we're going to do the bad, which will be four hours. And then the next day, we're going to do the ugly, which is going to be eight hours. Uh, and we're going to get very drunk for those. But in the future, so once COD 2020 comes out, we're going to play it. Of course, we'll do a podcast episode about like our initial thoughts. That'll be on a Saturday. Um, but then three months after that, we'll be doing State of the Game Address number one for COD 2020. And then three months later, six months total, two, nine months, three, and then year in review there. So this is going to be a staple. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, first little kind of random thing I wanted to hit. Uh, Syrian, also known as Sirytron, who is my favorite streamer on planet Earth, by the way. He is a PC uh, Call of Duty streamer. He doesn't play Warzone. He only plays multiplayer. Um, he's fucking disgusting, insane at this game. He's really good. He's an Australian, and he is very genuinely very funny. Um, he streams this game all the time. He's partnered. He's a full-time streamer. I strongly recommend you guys check him out, by the way. But there was an interesting development uh, today. As, as a matter of fact, uh, he was playing the game. He was fed up with it and <laughs> he finished a game and he said, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm done with this fucking shit game. And he just went on a tirade and said, I'm uninstalling it. I'm never playing this game again. I'll play call of duty again when COD 2020 comes out. Uh, now this makes me sad cause I fucking love watching that guy. Uh, but he feels he feels the same way we do, if not more. He really fucking hates this game. Uh, and he just couldn't take it anymore. So he is uninstalled. And, uh, you know, most of you probably don't know who he is. So it probably doesn't mean much to you. But for those of you who do know who he is, this was the highlight of his last game. And then his tirade is pretty fucking funny because I sympathize with it so much. Um, any thoughts on this, Tanner? Because I know you like Syrian as well. <laughs> well, he'll be back in a week. He's uninstalled this game like two or three times, so. That's where I'm at, too. He'll be back. I don't back. think into it too much. He he'll still knows back. he gets the most viewers playing it, I'm sure. So, I mean, he, he's even said that he doesn't want to play it, but that's what his viewers want to watch, because that's probably where 98% of his viewers found him were Call of Duty. So, he's going to end up playing... But I get it. He really thinks it's that bad of a game. Did he uninstall it like on stream? It doesn't. That worked. He uses game capture because he's smart. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. The impression his screen was black while he's talking about uninstalling it. I'm pretty fucking sure he did it. He wouldn't lie yeah. about something like that. He's not. He's yeah. not. He's not looking for an LSF fucking Reddit thread. So I think he did. Yeah. Um But I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> um. I guess we already talked about this because Tanner made me. Um, yeah, I didn't know you would put it down there. Yeah, I, I usually yeah. that's an announcement type thing, but I know you're a stupid I'm trying. Bitch, I so. try to okay. I try to separate those. Um, so I'll just go to the next one. Uh, absolutely astounding uh, amount of patrons. Tanner, go ahead and start your stream. Um, you guys are fucking insane. Uh. As I alluded to earlier, this full-time content creation thing, journey, uh, dream, might actually happen, which I didn't anticipate being possible or the case. Uh, so I can't stress this enough. I really genuinely uh, am extremely over the moon grateful for every single one of you. Uh, whether you're listening, whether you're here on Twitch chatting, whether you're subbing, gifting subs, gifting bits, donating, um, all of you, uh, it's insanely helpful. And uh, the support for this dumb fucking podcast that we've gotten has been, has exceeded my expectations tenfold. And it is actually like, overwhelmingly positive and uh just the the 
the growth that we've been experiencing, how fun it is to be a part of the Discord now. Like, yeah. Tanner and I can't make the Discord good because we're just two people. So the fact that a lot of you have joined the fucking Discord and just participated, just said anything, posted anything, asked questions, answered questions, posted your thoughts, whatever. Uh, we literally could not make like a vibrant Discord uh, without you guys. Because again, we're just two people. So the fact that like you guys, I mean, it sounds small, but the fact that you guys are just joining the Discord and making it like an actual community uh, is really more appreciated than you guys probably think. So again, to everyone who's listening, watching, donating, whatever, uh, thank you guys so goddamn much. And uh, I, hopefully again, I still think I might be getting ahead of myself here, but, uh, you know, going full time appears to be on the horizon. Hopefully. Uh, so we really fucking appreciate it. Tanner and I both do immensely. Um, and if we could do it full time, we would have a lot of fun fucking shit to do. A lot of fun shit planned. Uh, I have so many ideas for things I could do that I just don't have time for right now. So if I was able to go full time, which appears to be the trajectory right now, then for all of you listening, you can expect a lot more good shit a lot more often. And that is great for you guys, of course. And it's great for me as well, because, uh, you know, again, this is literally my dream. I mean, this is the only thing. I want to do this, this is the only thing I think about like ever uh you know doing this is the only thing I've thought about for the last 10 years is like how to do something like this and I I feel like I finally found the lane I finally found the thing that people are uh enjoying enough such that I could actually support myself pay bills and do it full time so so thank you all so much. Um, and my first note here was uh, we opened the Patreon recently and we have way more patrons than I expected to. Uh, we haven't even released a fucking bonus episode yet. <laughs> it's coming, boys. Sorry. <laughs> and we have almost 20 patrons and almost all of them are fucking the highest tier. So it's like the <laughs> it's, Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's insane. Like. So for all of you, especially that joined the Patreon, like, thank you so much. And we will deliver the bonus episodes, of course, by the way. Um, and we appreciate it. I'm trying to push for four bonus episodes per month next month. I need to talk to Tanner about that. But, uh, but again, just thank you guys so goddamn much. Uh, this has been such a fun journey so far. And I get the feeling that we're just getting started and that this shit's going to continue popping off. And it is entirely thanks to you guys. So um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and uh, from Tanner's heart as well. So uh, if you did want to... So again, I'll reiterate, if you're listening, that's more than I could ask for. And I appreciate you enjoying the podcast. And I don't want you to do anything else. But... If you insist on supporting with your wallet directly, the best way to do that is the Patreon. Um, we get the biggest cut from the Patreon. We get 92% of a Patreon pledge, whereas with a Twitch sub, we get 50%. Um, and also, if you support on Patreon, then Tanner and I both get that money. Whereas if you sub to me, for example, on Twitch, Tanner doesn't see any of that. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm trying to encourage you guys to give your offline subs to Tanner, not me. Because I'm doing very well on Twitch. And Tanner is also doing quite well, but not as well as me. So if you have one Twitch sub to give, maybe an Amazon Prime, please do me a favor. Give it to Tanner. I don't, I don't need it. Tanner could use it more than I could. <laughs> so, <laughs> so do that. 
But my point is, if you have, if you're willing to spend five bucks to support monetarily and you want to do that, the farthest those five dollars will go is on Patreon. So, again, not necessary, not required. I appreciate everyone for just listening or watching. That is more than enough. But if you wanted to give five bucks, first place you should look, please, is Patreon. And you get the most shit for that, too. Because for five bucks on Patreon, you're getting the bonus episodes, which is the bulk of the value that will come from the Patreon. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond that, there are higher tiers on the Patreon. There are subs. And, you know, for those of you who know, you've already been doing it. So thank you again. I, I can't. I literally can't say it enough. It's like full time is like on the horizon and it makes my dick so hard. Uh, so that dream is being realized or potentially being realized because of you guys. And I, I thank you so goddamn much. Um, so yeah, I, I did not expect that many patrons so quickly, honestly. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much. It's, it's actually crazy. Genuinely. Yeah, for sure. Jake down, by the way, join the, uh, oh, you're already there. Okay. He's been in it for an hour and a half. So, <laughs> okay. cause I told him 20 minutes, an hour and a half ago. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so yeah, Shit thank you guys Jake. so much. Um, remember to follow me on Twitter at Razanon, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Razanon, Instagram, Razanon TTV, follow Tanner on Twitter at Tanner Dropshot, T-A-N-N-E-R-D-R-O-P-S-H-O-T. On Twitch at Tanner Dropshot, and on Instagram at Tanner with four R's, T A N N E R R R R. Um, and also, again, if you have Amazon Prime, go to Twitch.tv/slash Tanner Dropshot, make an account, link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account, and then give Tanner what is called a Twitch Prime subscription. It is included in the cost of your Amazon Prime subscription, so it costs you nothing, but it also gives Tanner money. Uh, so please do that. Um, also, find me on YouTube at Razanon or search for The Drop Shot. You'll find us either way on YouTube. Full episodes of the pod with video are posted there. And then I also clip out sections of the podcast <sighs> that pertain to a specific topic there. So you can like share those with your friends and say, hey, you might like this podcast that I love that I've rated five stars on iTunes. Uh, watch this clip. And then they might like the clip and then they might fucking rate the podcast five fucking stars on iTunes themselves. That's very helpful. And then also the gameplay breakdowns, which are not on the podcast feed because it wouldn't make sense for them to be because you need to see the video for them to get or for them to be of any value are also on the YouTube. So if you wanted to watch the gameplay breakdowns that we've recently started doing, sub to me at Razanon on YouTube. And then you can see those full gameplay, 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 Blake downs, gameplay breakdowns. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, of course, again, join the fucking discord and again, consider joining our Patreon. We've got bonus episodes for every patron. And then we also do gameplay breakdowns and, uh, shout outs and episode suggestions and shit. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. One word. You can look at all the benefits there. We also have a merch store with a bunch of absolutely fucking fire merchandise, uh, which you can find linked in the show notes. And uh, it is also conveniently linked for you in the chat. We've got dog bandanas, phone cases, tank tops, sweatshirts, t shirts, dresses, hoodies, uh, whatever the satchels uh <laughs> fanny packs actually whatever the fuck you can think of um you can find it at the drop shop uh which which again can be found in the show notes and that is a good way to support us monetarily and if you do get something by the way wear it and send me a picture of it and then i will repost it um rate the pod five stars on itunes and tell your fucking friends about us and then tell them to rate it five stars on itunes and lastly, special thanks to our Damascus patrons, Adam H, Face Squire, Gift Curse, Jake W, Mr. Matt Dad, Mr. Salmonilla, Rain Man, Sand Stoner, Slivovitz, Sniff Sniff Ham, Bone, 
To Kill Us a Rocking Bird, Zerosio, and Jay Pritch. You boys are fucking nuts. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being Damascus patrons. Uh, Tanner, are you live? Yes. All right. Thank you all for watching. Have an excellent evening. I hope you enjoyed the State of the Game address. And as always, remember, stay humble. Stay humble.